Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's Wednesday night, and we are live. And those two are talking away fish. over the intro again. Hello, guys. <laughs> Hi. About venomous fish. About venomous fish. Venomous fish, yeah. yeah. You fish look like you're having fun there, at least. Yeah. Yeah, this week we're talking about publishing platforms, uh, gaming publishing platforms specifically. Online, offline, on shelves, DLC, that kind of thing. We're just going to see kind of what we can what we can muster with it. So as you can see, we've got Sam back this week. And we've actually got him on cam as well. So we apologize. You thought it was safe to podcast. He returns. <laughs> hey, he's, a bit, he's a little bit blurry, but he's uh, at least with us. Uh, apologize if anything does go wrong with it, but you, you know what it is. Uh, he hello to everyone in the channel. Hello to uh, Potato and uh, Mythalo. And um, yeah, so let's get going. Are you going to do the warnings or anything like that? Or are we not bothering Yeah, we swear a bit. And yeah. Um, yeah, so we kind of just, if you, if you are offended, walk away. But I'm sure by now our audience uh, are aware of that. Um, what do you mean? What Someone someone just said, what happened to Stee? What has happened to Stee? Um, What's happened what, to recently? you? Recently. Well, not a lot, really. Um... <laughs> I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure what that means, but I hopefully he'll explain it without talking about Minesweeper. Maybe. No, you're not me. No, no, I'm not you. I'm. I'm now totally confused. Anyway, said yes. Oh. So, publishing platforms. <laughs> that was that was a yeah. great start, guys. That was a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful go. Um, so yeah, so we, we were going to talk about uh, the different publishing platforms we use to uh, we use to buy games as gamers. Um, essentially, I mean, what is it as a PC gamer? It's Steam, isn't it? Esteemed as um, the, there's play. Origin, you play, yeah. There's actually, I mean, thinking about it, there's a lot of different ways to buy games now. There's a, there's a hell of a lot of. Why are you smiling at? <laughs> Me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some magic on the, uh, on the live stream right now because unfortunately, Ooh. I've, I've managed to mix Steam ah. and <laughs> Sam up, <laughs> and that's what he was referring to. So uh, just, just bear with us for one second. Yep. You, you guys keep keep uh, going on. So we're so yeah, there's <laughs> lots, there's sense, lots yeah. of ways to buy games. I mean, me and Steve, um, only this weekend actually, we're in, uh, in town having a look through the, the the gaming establishments, and there wasn't a lot there for us really. I mean, they seem to be selling more, um, like action figures and and yeah, paraphernalia. Very much merchandise kind of focus, mm -hmm. especially with things like Minecraft. There's always been some a whole shelf. There's always been dedicated. some merchandise though, hasn't there? At, on yeah. the counter in in game or game station or whatever. It has, but it's almost like the 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 um the amount of stuff you can buy now. I mean, we've been going to this game for years. We've been going there since we were kids, and I remember it used to be packed with shelves for all different systems. It was just all games, maybe a few magazines in the front. Now and there's the big open spaces. There's games on the on the walls, like charts and stuff. But there's, it seems to be less choice there. Yeah, I've uh, I I walked into I think it was a game station. No, it can't be because I think they closed down, didn't they? It was not Granger Games now. Uh, it's been absorbed into game. There's a Granger right next to it, but I don't know I don't know about the one. You know the one um, you know where Carson's Meat Place is, Sam in Blackpool. You know the remember the sandwich shop down that back alley. Do you know yeah. what the one opposite that was called? Doesn't um, really matter, but <laughs> that that was I think that was Game Station back in the day. Game Station. Well, there's still one there, correctly. and it, there's there's two right next to each other. But anyway, um, it's uh, I went went in the other day, and you're right. There's nothing on the shelves. There's nothing that's interesting that I can't get much cheaper somewhere else, whether it be a download or it be a hard copy of it. So what's the point in the? the, the I, mean, for, I mean, the last time that I actually went out to buy a physical game uh, was for the 3DS. Uh, it was a JRPG, so not some of that was massively popular, but it was in the charts. Um, I went to game, and they didn't have it, and they were not stocking it. Mm -hmm. I managed to find a copy in Granger Games, but they only had one copy in, and that was the Granger Games in Darlington, which is, you know, for people who don't know, it's about a 30-mile drive for me. All right. Mm. So <laughs> for people who don't I, I know specifically where you live. I didn't miles to get the game. I was going <laughs> that way anyway, and it started to pop in, but... Is yeah, there a... The, um... uh, Oh, that's another point. Uh, Mythalor just raised a point. Um, very few PC games in shops these days. Very there was, few. There was like half an aisle in, in game. It was yeah, and it was all crap that you'd never consider buying. Half an aisle? You mean half a section? Bother. Yeah, in like, an aisle. The, yeah, yeah. Like, like an aisle with, well, not an aisle, sort of a shelf, shelf. but only yeah. half the yeah. shelf had PC games one on row, it. One row on a set of shelves. It's just mm. got some games on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't really frequent those places anymore. I used to go all the time um, buy a lot of console games, but 
they never seem to have yeah, they never seem to have the one that you're after unless you try and look through the second hand bits and then you're buying someone's dodgy second hand. Yeah. And they just they just they shove all the really big triple A games, but it isn't just one copy, they've got a row of Call of Duties and it's like mm -hmm. do you know what? Given that they're all in discs at the back of the store, you don't need to have a row of display cases. It's marketing, you know? it's all it is. It's marketing to the it's to people who aren't like, really Gamers, more, more. That's, I think yeah. it's fair to say that these days, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I, I, if not, I if agree with Chris. Um, if you're a gamer, you know where to go to get games, and you know yeah. all the different ways you can get games. You know, and I uh, think yeah. the likes of game and what have you these days are very much catering for this kind of this new wave of gamers that have come on that only play the AAA titles and will only play on Xbox. Uh, yeah. The majority of the yeah. shelf space when we went in over the weekend, Lou, I don't know if you noticed, but it was actually taken up by games that hadn't been released yet. I yeah, was I was actually games. I was actually thinking more about the 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 mums buying for the kids or people buying that. for other people's presents. I wasn't actually saying the gamers that buy the games for themselves in the shops aren't gamers. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> but I, they, you've got a fair point still. It's uh, you know they're not as educated in games because they probably haven't grown up with it or they're getting no, on they, the bandwagon. They're not gaming there's, aristocracy. Yes, there's definitely an element of of the man in the shop told me this was the game you'd like. You know, like. It, that's the way those places are well, set up. They're set up so mums and dads and aunties and uncles and granddads or whatever can go in and buy a game for their kids. That's what game feels like to me now, and it has been going that way for a couple of years, and it's getting worse. And it's got it's not going to get any better. They're not going to they're not going to bring it back round. I think this is a because like they we can... had the technology episode. This is going to be the way of the world in the future. Hard copy of things in general, any type of media that you want to talk about is going to go away eventually. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty much Just happened logical. with music already. I mean, we do yeah. still have CDs in shops, but, I mean, unless you're a real enthusiast, if you, in fact, if you're a real enthusiast, you're getting vinyl, and, you know, um, you're not yeah. you're not worrying about your CDs. So, I don't know, it's, I, I don't know if CDs die or not. I don't buy CDs, so I don't, I don't know. But, I imagine it's not as popular as it once was with Spotify and oh, no. all the other streaming services. I actually did buy a CD the other day, though. Yeah. It, was a, it was a gift for my uh, my dad's birthday. It was a new Pink Floyd album. There you go. There well, you he's go. got all Good the choice, ones. By the way. Right. Well, so. Excellent album, by the way. I haven't yet listened I, to it, but Pink Floyd, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be terrible. Yeah. Um, is there, um, on you know the DS, is there some distri uh, digital distribution platform The Nintendo for that? Store. It's the I'm, same thing that links in with the Wii. Yeah, I was going to say that. I, I actually looked that up just before the show because I was like, right, there's PSN, there's Xbox Live, Marketplace, and then there's arcade. I think Xbox Live has arcade, or did used to have our Xbox Live arcade. Yeah. Um, but is I've never ever bought anything from a, a, a Nintendo ever. Well, there's a reason a, behind that. Copy. Go on. Because it's ridiculously expensive. Uh, really? Yeah. Um, that game that I bought the hard copy of, which was um, was Fire it Fire Emblem? Was it? Yeah. yeah, Fire Emblem. Because anyone was interested. On the Nintendo Store was forty nine ninety nine to download. I bought a physical copy brand new for thirty two ninety nine. That is well, a lot. That's a big jump. And considering you're not I... actually getting anything with it, you're not getting the book, you're not getting the case, you're not getting the cartridge. There's no manufacturing cost per se involved. Why is it that much more expensive? But that is that's, copy? it is true. Like you, it's the PC games, yeah, the PC games. Um, uh, you can buy a PC game in shops for twenty five, thirty quid, or you can get it off Steam for thirty five, forty quid. Uh, okay, I was thinking the other way around. You can usually get it cheaper online than you can in the shops, can't you? No, I, I think with PC so games, easy. it goes the other way around. Oh, that's odd. But buying them online is more expensive. It's been so long since I bought a PC game in a shop. You know, I've I've been buying them on Amazon, and you know, if I want a if I want a physical copy of something, I'll get it on Amazon or I say buying play on it, or online. I do mean buying online through the, the the kind of official outlets. I mean, certainly when you buy games on Origin, for instance, there. An absolute yeah. premium. I think Battlefield, when it first came out, Battlefield 3, was like 50 quid in Origin or something. It was yeah. very high. It was basically priced at the same price point as the Xbox version of it. Whereas you could buy it <clears throat> from an alternative retailer, or even like Amazon or something like that, for 30 quid. Mm. I mean, so PC Origin... games have always been a bit cheaper, though, in general. Uh, we won't go into why that is. I'm sure all of us at least have an idea. But it's... Um, it, 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 what, why do why do console games cost more? I don't get it. I, that's... I think it's a trend they always have done. I mean, I remember Mega Drive games costing forty quid. They talk yeah. about. Um, I've heard people talk about um, the fact that PC games are, ch are cheaper because PC gamers are, are more educated and they can get hold of things, you know, pirated or or they can get 
cheaper stuff online or something. So that's why they're cheaper. But I can't, I'm I'm kind of detracting from the point you were trying to make about the the fact that PC games are more expensive in a shop, though. Yeah. Going off on a bit of a tangent there. Sorry. No, the more the le- the less expensive in a the shop. They normally get them cheaper in a shop, brand new. They're on Steam, the, maybe. Yes, on Steam, yeah. Not on Amazon, for example. No, like, no, no. I, yeah. yeah. Because I, I, again, I always buy my hard copies on Amazon, and even you know, if I do decide to get a deluxe or a, a, you know, a nice case, you know, like a special edition, which is very rare, I'll only get it if it's something cool in it. Um, apart from when I was duped with the Assassin's Creed one. Um, We've already talked about that. Like, yes, we have, we have. <laughs> um, I, but yeah, I kind of, I don't know. I've always preferred a, a hard copy of something. Well, did you? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you all must be the same as me and you remember buying a game and then coming home on the bus reading the manual and thinking I can't wait to play this game the Commodore 64 games from uh, Toys R Us that was oh, you could get them you could get them the local agents. paper shop around yeah us. really so like, uh, yeah just, you uh, could buy, they like, like a, a, like a rotating carousel thing with all the tapes on it you sometimes get games which I think like, I'm straight on one side and Spectrum on the other yeah with, with uh, 102 um, games scrolled on it you know like the, the counter on the tape and the, yeah. the you know like on the the pirates you used to get from your dad's friend or whatever, you remember getting that like from Commodore tapes or Spectrum stuff? No, I, I bought all my Spectrum. Oh, I'll, I'll, two quit. Sorry, you I'm, sure we, it, yeah. I'm sure. I did. I look. I was a kid. You know when you're. <laughs> well, I was talking about this with someone the other day. When you're a kid, you don't think about going out to buy an album. When you're young, there's yeah. a certain age you hit when it, it becomes value. But before that, it's like no, my pocket money's for sweets or it's for, I, I don't know, Scout Club or something. You know. That's an age thing, though. You go, you go through a transition of like, well, a pocket, yeah, pocket money is for things like that. Whereas if if it's a game, then obviously my parents buy that for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't spend money on that. What the hell? That's why. Because yeah, how many kids be, are fifty quid to spend on a game? Well, that's it. It used to be uh, an event as well, getting a new, getting a new game for the Mega Drive. It's like, oh my got God. a new game for the Mega Drive, and then <laughs> yeah. obviously as I got older and I'd got my own jobs and money and stuff, it was just. Whatever you know, what I mean. But when I was a kid, or you know, before puberty, yeah, it was a big deal. Every new game was a big deal, and it was like they weren't that common either. It wasn't like I was getting one every other week. It was usually one, one or two at a birthday, and then maybe a couple more in between. And now and- we've got we've got ten games a, a, a day coming out. You know, like indie I, games on Steam and things like that. It's it's ridiculous. I actually now. buy and play fewer games now than I did then, though. I used to get a couple of games every month. I had a lot of um, games on my Mega Drive and a lot of games on my PlayStation. I had a good sixty odd oh, games I, on my PlayStation. I used to rent a lot of my like SNES games and. I bet you got more than sixty games. games on your Steam account. I bet you um, you yeah, I do, but I've though. had the Steam account for many more years than I had my PlayStation. Sam doesn't use Steam, and he's got more than that a hundred games on his Steam account. Everyone <laughs> has got, them, and, and I bet ninety percent of them haven't been played. <laughs> Most people, anyway. But again, that's a I think that's a running joke with the Steam community. Yeah. Yeah, but that's again. That's another it's thing that point, Steam as a Steam as a platform is not just about serving games to you and getting you. You know, they, they have all kind. They have events on. They have um, you know, usually sales events, but they have other kinds of things going on. They have like they had a badge thing going on over something. Oh, this the year. Was it the card Christmas, thing? Was it? Yeah, the, was it the collecting? Yeah, and there's a, the trading platform for cards on there, which I, again I haven't got involved in. Uh, some people are very into it. Um, There's but, been a couple of times I've got a trading card where it's been a double of one I've already had, and you can you can go on straight away and sell it. And there's been people buying this thing. Yeah, I, I've like, sold one. I sold one for forty five pence. Yeah, it and was a like, silver. For, it's, like, it's um, nothing. It's like an image. Could you make Could you make a living off that? Do you think if you bought enough games on Steam and you got them cheap enough in bundles? Ever, I don't think you'd ever be like quids in with that. No, I've, I've only ever made living. Pen. <laughs> I don't see the point. I don't get it personally. The biggest, the biggest thing with that is that it's the the biggest um, users of that community or that that system within Steam are the Counter Strike Global Offensive players because all of the weapons can be sold and bought yeah. and traded and stuff, and that's massive. I mean, even the SQS guys who were playing that were really into it. I think Greg ended up with something like fifty quid's worth of weapons or something that he sold, so he actually made a profit from the game. Mm. But that's how you can do that in World of Warcraft and that kind of thing, you know, gold mining and I know it's illegal. Or you illegal can, but he, was, he wasn't rules, grinding, but... he was just playing the game. Yeah, but I'm saying, yeah, you, the, the, you can make money out of games, I was just saying specifically that that one thing. That's what I'm um, also, Steam has, has got a community as well in terms of, you know, there's the there's the green light community, then there's the, the forums and the, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not saying they're great, but they're, that's an additional 
value, yeah. essentially, isn't it? To use also Steam. the uh, the Steam Workshop stuff as well. Yeah, which I think is I for like. specific games. I think it's really really good. I mean, Skyrim. It was like, amazing. Yeah, Skyrim. It's taken it. the taken the pain out of that, hasn't it? Even with stuff like Nexus. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Nexus was Nexus. still yeah. It was easier than doing it manually, but it was still a bit of a pain sometimes. Do you do you all remember the um, the kind of big hoo ha when Steam first came out when everyone was really everyone against it? it. Yeah, yeah, everyone was like, because we just talked about how we don't go to shops and buy games and like hard copies anymore. But back then, everyone did, and it was like we want the CD, we want the DVD, we want the manual, we want the, all the things that come with it. And Steam was taking us away from us and not allowing us to just lend a game to our mates or or to sell a game when we got bored of it. And that kind of quickly blew over, didn't it? I think everyone was really up in arms about it. But then they kind of. The, the temptation of the fact that you can just have a game and download it within a few hours. But but back then as well, there wasn't ways to get cheap Steam keys. It was there wasn't really the, that incentive there as well. Now it's easier to get much much cheaper games than it used to be. Back then it was you're paying thirty quid for it or you're not getting it. You know, and and remember that the, one of the main issues, if I remember rightly, was that we used to get CDs from the shop, and the CDs would require Steam to install the game, and mm. that to a gamer. To to a PC gamer is is the ultimate sin, isn't it? You can't force someone to use a platform. Everyone whinges about um, Origin still because games are forcing them to use it. But they only whinge about Origin because it's bad. Steam mm. has redeemed itself and it's got into a situation where it's actually much more convenient for us. Whether we've got a hard copy, whether we download games, whether we want to expand games with DLC, whether it's all integrated into one thing, and it makes PC gaming a lot more like console gaming so we're, we're we it's 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 again more convenience and I, every single show i mention convenience humans want things that are easy yeah path of least yeah. resistance of course yeah. so steam has has done a good job of that we've got to now got to a point where it's accepted in in the gaming society and we actually want to use it i i won't usually play a game unless it's in steam now Mm. I mean, the old games, yes, you know, if I see something that's amazing on GOG or something like that, that's, you know, 50p or, or a quid or something, yeah. and I, I'll grab it and I'll be like, that's cool, play it once and probably never play it again because I forget about it because I'm never going in my games folder anymore. I'm going in my Steam folder. You know, I'm going in my Steam uh, app to find my game. And I guess the other thing about Steam is that back then, basically, they are just selling a few Valve games. Mm. That was the, the pretty much the entire... Um, the, the entire repertoire, but now they they sell pretty much every game. It's basically your online PC game shop, is what it seems like. It, mm. Anything that's worth having is available on there. If you don't release on Steam, you don't sell. You don't sell games. Yeah. I mean, apart from the big names like EA and uh, the other one, uh, yeah, Ubisoft. Yeah, they're kind of going uh, against it, but that's only going to last so much longer. Yeah. So Origin is the EA one, and you play yeah. is the Ubisoft one, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. So both yeah. of them, they sort of force you into going into those things when you buy a game and this is on consoles as well which is really really irritating <laughs> you, have, you have to sign up for you play if you play an Assassin's Creed game and those kind of nonsense it's like mate I don't care mm -hmm. I'm not playing the multiplayer so yeah. why just why let me play that? the game that I bought on my console without you yeah this is the That's... this is the future guys it's the connected well, yeah. future this this was it a big is, yeah. um, big criticism of Diablo three when it came out in that it's basically an it's it's a single player game that you have to play online, so you have to play on a on a public not a public game server but you have to play on a game server, even in single player. So you get lag in single player and you get connection problems in single player. It's crazy. Same thing with um Sim City the new Sim City that had the same yep. similar sort of thing and it all the servers were broke because you you had to play the game online and you couldn't play it if the servers were broke. But is well, that just trying to implement that uh, that thing with the new Xbox, didn't they, where it had to go online at least once every twenty four hours? Yeah. On Xbox Live, Which otherwise you couldn't I, actually use it to play games. I <laughs> believe that thing with the Xbox thing, because that was the Xbox One, you know when they did the, the announcement and yeah. uh, everyone went crazy about it. But the thing is that it wasn't what they said, it was the way that they handled that announcement and the way that they handled the backlash. Yeah. And then their and then their one eighty on it because when they handled the backlash, what was that? What was some one of the CEOs or one of the head guys went? If you want to play uh, Xbox games offline, just get an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. And it's like, right, that was like the wankiest thing you could have possibly said <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in, in relation to that. To legitimate concerns that people had, you could have just assuaged it by 
it's just games, isn't it? You know. Imagine the CEO of Microsoft Games. Yeah. Like, it's only just, games. just games. Just, yeah. They handled it badly, and then because they handled it so badly, they had to completely go back on it and not do it. And now the Xbox One isn't doesn't have that um, necessity anymore. Same with the Connect, though. They went back on the Connect, and everyone was up in arms for literally about five seconds. <laughs> and then Twitter just quietened down. They all went, oh, actually, we've got a choice now. Uh, that's what we wanted. Yeah. Hang on, were we just wasn't complaining that, for nothing? Wasn't that about yeah. the, the rumours? Uh, the rumours founded or not that uh, it could like measure your heartbeat and stuff like that. And it was always on, um, and it well, was like looking it, at you. It can do They're that. Connect, but yeah, it's the always on thing, and it was the fact yeah. that the Xbox needed it to run. I think people had a problem with. Why? Why did they do that? What was because the, it was integrated was the... into the UI and the the interface and everything, and it was basically they were so trying. So you kind of go like this at your Xbox and well, it they, do they, something. I've got to connect downstairs for my 360. I bought it out of obviously out of choice because it doesn't have to come with it. But I I think it's a brilliant little bit of kit. Never use it, but I think it's awesome. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I've got no. I mean, if I had a different house, different setup, maybe, but. Yeah, I, I, it's some way you could do cartwheels and walls. It's, it? it's really impressive bit of hardware. It's a really cool bit of thing. I'm actually going to be using it soon to do some capture um, for for my game, and it's like I'm quite looking forward to seeing how it works and what it captures and how you know how 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 high oh my god how good it is. <laughs> Chris, can I come round and watch you as you fall off the wall? I'm not doing parkour. <laughs> Screw oh. that. Oh, you think my house is the, big uh, enough to do parkour? Even if I had the if I had the room, <laughs> I haven't got the skill. I just know. He's going to do his Shakespearean actings, aren't yeah. you? No, I'm going to, oh, I was actually God! just I was going to start with something really simple, like walking from here to there. Yeah, and then maybe, maybe maybe a little bit of like standing around and looking. Yeah. Have you seen oh, your man. walk though? I have. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm proper like a snake hips, stealth ninja. Snake. I don't actually have any hips. So if you that can see, there's, there's no hips. You just got to join like an action figure. Your legs can only do that. Yeah, that's it. I've got a little bit of uh, cart, not cartilage, plastic. Um, <laughs> on to the subject. What's everyone's experience with um, Steam Stream anyway? Talking about the uh, the benefits of the system. Is all right. The home yeah. home in home streaming. Yeah. Um, I, we've we have talked about this. I think outside of the show, I believe. Yeah. I've I've used I use it quite a lot because uh, my wife likes playing zombie games or she likes watching me play zombie zombie games and horror games and like we play the walking dead uh, that story you know this uh, just the walking dead game isn't it it's called yeah um uh, you know we, we played a few of them and i think uh, the next one we're going to play is portal 2 uh, just cuz i like the story and we were watching some well, stephen merchant game. stuff well no no okay I'm, you know what i mean we haven't played many anything but zombie games so far but we shall be playing other ones um and i like it I don't have any problems with it apart from um, a hardware problem, which is nothing to do with Steam. My network cable keeps coming out on my laptop. And have you played a first-person shooter in it yet? Yeah, I, I played have. Dead Island. Well, it's not a shooter, but you do shoot in it. Um, is Dead it Island. mouse and keyboard? Yeah. And you had no problems with that. I mean, it's because a bit I, laggy I because I've tried Wolfenstein, and um, there is a delay, noticeable delay. And now I'm 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 the sort of person who has to turn VSync off because that's too much lag. I turn VSync off as well. However, I haven't played the games that I've played downstairs on anything else. I haven't tried right. it on my computer upstairs or anything like that because I got it specifically to play with cells. So. Well, I I found playing any kind of mouse and keyboard game, any 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 sort of game with with precision controls, really basically unplayable because of the delay. There is always going to be a delay, and that, even if even if that delay is something like 20, 30 milliseconds, it's too much for for that kind of input, and it just completely throws me out. It's yeah, really for weird. Turn-based games, it works fantastically. I imagine Strategy even for control games. pad-based games where you kind of you're not expecting things to be in completely sharp, but when you move your mouse and you expect it to move instantly, it's really jarring. So I couldn't use it for for I tried Wolfenstein, like I say, it ran beautifully, looked great, but the lag. Even though it was as be the best it could co possibly be, the technology just wouldn't allow it. Just the physical limitations of having to encode video and then decode it on another computer <coughs> and send it across a network. Well, I if you use too much delay, I didn't notice. I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I seemed fine with it, and I was playing first-person games. I've been playing all kinds of stuff with it. Um, I've got a gig network. I don't know if that makes any difference. Shouldn't do. Uh, I, it, I mean, games don't 
cost that much to stream, I don't think, do they? I mean, I mean the streaming video, so of course it is. It's, streaming it video, it's yeah, not so. that much, though. It's H.264. It's the actual time taken to encode and decode the video. But it's also quite high quality, so it will need a decent connection, but 100 megabit will be more than enough. Yeah. But yeah, I've not noticed anything. I'm happy with it. I, I like it as an addition to the Steam Arsenal. Yeah, I, I it like the useful, idea of it. But uh, to Lou's point, it only only works on certain types of games. I've I've, I've managed to play a Civ with it. I've managed to play the new South Park game with it. But they're both games where you don't need instant feedback from your movements. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. It's, it's, I like the idea of being able to play like a a really high performance game, like playing Skyrim, for instance, with a control pad on your laptop. That'd be quite cool. With a control it, pad. Why with a control pad? Well, because you wouldn't be able to play mouse and keyboard on a on a laptop, and you get the same problem that I just mentioned, the lag. So I'd prefer to play it with a control pad, because then you the lag doesn't matter so much. Go up to your computer room and play it on your PC. Well, yeah, but it's like being able to. Well, Skyrim is maybe a bad example, but the reason I mentioned Skyrim is because it's a very heavy system requirement game. Being able to play games that are like really harsh, kind of GPU burners on your shitty laptop is really cool. Yeah, no, that's again, that's well, yeah, it's one of the main benefits. That's, yeah, that is the, the benefit, in fact. Otherwise, you play it just play the, other the game on your laptop. The interesting thing with Steam as well, and a few others have started to do this now, is the um, sharing games with your friends and family, like literally sharing a game, so you can allow other people to access your Steam library and play games. That I mean, that's evolved from the uh, the gifting, though, hasn't it? That's evolved kind from of. the uh, from the fact you can buy packs of four games and then gift them to your friends and or. And they can pay you separately if they want to, or unless you're being really generous. But a few, a few distribution platforms are doing it now. I can't remember which one it was, but there was one I saw recently. Hey, music. Uh, no, the, music a, ca a car just went past my All house. Right. Um, Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, it allows you to basically share your apps. I think it was one of the mobile things, like um, the App Store or something like that, where you can. I can't remember quite what it was, but it was quite a cool idea. That you can share content now. They kind of gotten over this whole idea that, oh, if you if you own a piece of content, you're going to pirate it with all your mates and rip us off. Yeah. Now they now they're the opinion. Yeah, you're paying micropayments. You're we're making more money than we ever did, mm. and so now we're going to allow you to share the games because we've got a handle on the 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 whole DRM thing, which yeah. is nice in a way. It's kind of it shouldn't. It shouldn't have to be something which I'm kind of impressed with because it should just work that way anyway. I, in the same way that you used to be able to lend your mates. I haven't, disc. I haven't pirated a game for so long, and yes, I admit I have pirated games in the past, and I know we're alive and everything. But you know, as it, it happens, you know, you get handed a CD from a mate at college or something. I had a few, but these days I I much prefer to buy them. Much prefer to either buy a download or, or go out and buy a physical copy. Yeah, a game. Get, get, when if you know where to go, games costing they're like they're a reasonable amount now. I think we haven't mentioned stuff like um, Kinguin or, you know, the the kind of, the, the the cheap or deal sites. These websites are basically buy a load of games during a sale and then sell them out of sale. Which is against the terms, unfortunately. On uh, really, yes, it's against the terms on Kinguin specifically, and they've actually been in trouble a few times about it. Um, I was reading an article the other day, I can't remember what it was, but some indie company uh, f sued them or something and, and took a. Uh, they, they co they're constantly getting cease and desist letters about specific user accounts. But how it works is like an eBay, you know, other people go on there, they just set up a, an account and then they sell keys on there and they end yeah. up either gifting them or giving them to. Uh, is it just a, is it gift or it's uh, it can be both I mean I've had a few yeah. gifts where some random person comes on and sends me a gift and then says there you go there's your game sometimes you I just get it via dodgy. a link that's so yeah. dodgy and, but, but it, it's 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 worked most of the time I've used it a few times and I'm I, I you know you get games for next to nothing sometimes I've well most of the time I've used it when I've missed something on a humble bundle or I've missed something that I wanted and I didn't have chance or I'm you know for whatever reason and I've wanted specifically to get that game so I paid more than I would have paid for a humble bundle for one game but you know still very very cheap yeah humble bundles interesting isn't it I mean the whole sales it, thing have you noticed how it's going now though I mean I don't know how many people have uh, have, have noticed it but it is it seems to be going quite a lot more commercial now and a lot more it is, yeah. Yeah. I'm, a not, store now. I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing but there's a lot more AAA stuff going on there now and there's a lot more it seems to be getting more organised and more markety and you know, and again, you know, it's for charity. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the, the, it's all legitimate and stuff. But it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it started indie, you know, 
and it feels a little bit like it's it's possibly moving away from from that. Mm. <sighs> I get I get the sense that the uh, the three PC guys here have a different experience to what Sam does in terms of because um, there's not really anything like that for consoles, is there? Is you basically yeah. paying full whack? You just pay for whatever that's on the PlayStation Network, as far as mm. in my experience. But they do have a lot of their own little. They do sales and stuff on there as well, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, with the like pretty decent back catalogue of PlayStation games, you can like I picked up all three Resident Evils for download. Um, that was only like twenty odd quid, I think, for one, two, and three. And I already had copies of them because they were so old and knackered. The like, lad played them all, got them damaged. That I was like, yeah, it'd be quite nice to have copies where I don't expect it to freeze when I walk into the police station. Resident Evil Two. You know, it's quite nice to not have that problem. They do um, polish them up, don't they? I mean, it's like the, the he- yes Halo no. Master Chief collection that just came out very recently. It's just um, loads of games that have already been played before. That's something slightly different. There's there's HD upgrades that they do. Where yeah, that there was the Halo Anniversary Edition. Is that what you're talking about? No, the new a... one, the Master Chief one, where they've that they've, they've re-released all of the Halo games. I think up until it's one through or four. Four is it? Is it, it, yeah. is it the original? Graphics. It's a. It's. It's. Is... The, they've given it the anniversary treatment for Halo Two, I believe. Right. Okay. So you got you got like a HD Halo Two. And that's like a. They've essentially reskinned it. They didn't. They haven't reskinned any of these games, like Resident Evil or Metal Gear Solid, mm. or anything like that. They are just the same versions. There's a slight. Um, uh, there's a difference in quality in that there's some textures. Um, that. I can't, it's really really hard to describe what I mean, but there was, uh, for example, there's a game I like called Legacy of Cain where you have this. Uh, Soul Reaver sword. Basically, that's like a lightsaber, and it's a blue, like glowy sort of sword figure. When you switch it on the PS3 version, there's a slight after effect of it on the screen, like a shadow mm. that it's left there, which wasn't on the original game. There's certain texture things like that that have popped up. Obviously, there's loads of HD re-releases, but they're all available on PC as well, are they not? I mean, not Resident Evil them. Four, Resident Evil Four HD is probably available on PC, to, right? And to be honest with you, like that. We don't get a lot of the good console games. You have to have a console as mm. well as a PC if you really want to play them. Um, although some you can emulate, it's still not the same yeah. as we've experienced when we were playing Metal Gear Solid One on the PSX yeah. emulator. It's mm. uh, yeah. So I mean, it's it's not. You don't get everything that you you desire as a PC gamer. You just get near near to everything. Yeah, yeah. it is a bit of a shame, really. I mean, there's there's, there's really good titles like um, The Last of Us. Um, that I'd love to play. And there's also, there's also some innovation and some interesting type of games going on on, uh, on consoles, like um, Heavy Rain when that came out. It's not a particularly, like, it, it's it's well talked about, but it's not particularly well known in terms of, the you know, the it does I don't, I don't think it sold particularly well. Um, it but did it, all right, I think. It did okay, I but I'm saying right. I know it wasn't a blockbuster, you know, it wasn't like a Call of Duty, you know, Hundreds of millions of copies. I'm sure we'll be able to find some figures somewhere if one of you want to look it up. But um, the yeah, it's I, I, it. It was still an interesting concept uh, that game, and you could we could we didn't have that because we don't focus on peripherals really on PCs apart from this. You know, we, the, we, you know, Oculus Rift for example. It's a peripheral. We don't we don't have drum kits. We don't have uh, I don't know. Have if we talked before about the how it's a strange thing in the gaming industry that um, you buy a certain product that can only be played on a certain company's hardware, as in you buy a PC game and it works on whatever type of PC you happen to have put together. If you buy a Nintendo Wii game, it only works on a Nintendo Wii. So the, the, I the, I love like my Zelda and that, but unless I I can't play them unless I go out and buy a Nintendo. All that kind of stuff seems like a slightly more like the old. The, the, it seems like the more the old days of video games, and that it, with with sort of publishing platforms being moved onto online downloadable stuff, it seems like things like yeah, a specific games console, this kind of stuff, is kind of becoming irrelevant. If it's going to eventually become irrelevant, because you, all you're doing is downloading something off the internet anyway. Steambox. The hardware that you play it on is like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, you, you're right. Uh, but I, I kind of disagree at the same time. I think it will probably eventually end up that we're all playing on a similar kind of thing. That they all, all I, these I'm, companies become publishers instead of instead of um, hardware yeah. people. You know, I mean, like Nintendo might become a publisher, like Sega have. They're kind as of already. To Sega used to be in uh, yeah, the, the, hardware the, developer. 
they kind of already get into that decision. I mean, the hardware that's in the modern devices isn't as far out as it used to be. I mean, they developed custom architectures for the the PlayStation Three and Two, didn't they? Whereas the PS Four is yeah. I mean, the PS Four and the the Xbox, all the Xboxes, are basically just being repackaged PCs. It's yeah. standardized PC hardware. Everything's ever, Macs are now PCs, though. You know, yeah. everything is becoming a PC. Everything and that makes except. Sense. You know your IBM mainframes and things like that. Everything is becoming it makes PC sense from so many points of view. It makes sense because you can buy hardware. You can the, the, these companies can just buy in hardware that's already tried and tested. They can develop games that will work on any machine. So you know yeah. EA people can can just make the game once rather than make it four or five times like what used to have to happen. It makes sense from a lot of points of view, but I still think there's going to be the segregation still just because everyone wants their own exclusives or their own exclusive markets. There's no technical reason why something like... Um, um I don't think that's necessarily got to continue though. Or it's a, it, doesn't, it doesn't exist in any other medium though. You don't have um, Paramount Pictures saying you can only play Paramount Pictures films on your Paramount Pictures DVD player. You see Do you know that? what I mean? It's not like you see- that. You say that, but when you look at TV series, I mean, it's like HBO will only allow um, you to watch Game of Thrones on their network, so they won't put it on Netflix. That's so true. So it does kind of happen still. It can't really happen with movies because the, the movie distributors don't have their own cinemas. Yeah, so, TV, TV when, does um, do that. That's some do. Fuck. Warner Brothers. When the battle for, for HD, uh, DVD, and Blu ray came out, it was very much segregated. You had certain, uh, certain studios would only publish on whoever they were signed up to. Well, if it was yeah. Sony, they'd published blu-ray yeah obviously the 360 had had hd one one and became the household it it was but to be fair blu-ray was always going to win it's a much it's a much bigger format it's much more versatile betamax was better than vhs and that didn't yeah all right you've got a point the thing is to be honest, Blu-ray is kind of tailing off now anyway because people are just watching stuff on Netflix. So this this online distribution is taking over in all aspects. You know what? If I want a good, if I like a film and I really, really want to watch it, I get it on Blu-ray. I prefer to see it on Blu-ray because there's a little bit of compression on uh, yeah on Netflix stuff. Even though it does look good, it's still a bit compressed. Well, I don't have anything to play Blu-rays. I've not bought a single Blu-ray. Okay, well, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's not not everyone is the same, you know. It's no, but I, I, I've I, I, got. I, um, I'll tell you one thing: if you want, a, uh, not to plug Sony too much, but if you want a decent and it's a, you can play Region One and Two Blu-rays on it. Get an old PS3. You can get one for cheapest chips, and you yeah. can buy Blu-ray imports from America, and it'll play them fine. That's one thing I never really understood. When the PS3 first came out, it was what four hundred and fifty pound. It's a lot of money. Yeah. The first so Blu-ray well. players when they came out was seven, eight hundred. Yeah, I remember remembers? that, and I remember the PS3 Mirror. plays Blu-rays and it's a games console. I actually, Why did you get anything else? I actually when the PS that was is exactly when the PS PS3 came out. That wasn't it? Is it? It, it the, was. That's stupid, when Blu-rays yeah. were, were starting to be come yeah. on sale. Yeah, I specifically remember that was one of the reasons that I got went for a PS3 because I wanted to watch the one Blu-ray that I'd, I'd managed to get from some obscure store online or something. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean. That whole TV thing is a different subject, but it annoys the hell out of me. Because <laughs> they make me pirate it, because I can't watch it legitimately. It's like, <laughs> fuck you, man, I want to watch this. And if you gave me an av- a legitimate avenue, it's usually when you're in the UK, you can't anyway. It's not really... It's just well, tied to this subject, but it's not to do with that's games. The, sa- the same thing applies to any series, though, that you want to watch, that you want to watch in England before it comes out on DVD. You know, that there's there's so many American shows that I want to watch that will never come out on TV over here, and the DVDs yep. will be very hard to get. But or expensive. Well, yeah. I usually will pay for the DVD if I like it enough because I intend to watch it more than once. But yeah, but there are yeah. certain limits though. There are some some that I've seen like for each series. You're talking about a hundred quid, for, including no, that's ridiculous. yeah, and like it's maybe I have twenty episodes, but it's ridiculous, you know. It's not just with American stuff as well. With a lot of Japanese stuff, it's very hard to yeah. get all the English copies. Yeah, true. Or, or copies that would work in England. Yeah, yeah it, it raises an inter- interesting point in that the globalization, like the fact that everyone's on the internet and everyone knows everything, and when something cool comes out, everyone knows about it around the world, puts a lot of pressure on on these distributors to actually get it around the world. And I don't think they've caught up with that yet. Not quite. No, it anywhere. is it, it it is like I'm behind, and there's no reason today why when summer gets released in America, it shouldn't be released at the same time in Europe, Asia, especially. Yeah. 
especially on things like Netflix, because that yeah. still happens on Netflix. Yeah. And that is well, the UK version of Netflix is different to the US version of Netflix. Why? The, the, the same the version. Yeah. Same. The same applies to the Fox Network. It's totally different. I know yeah. you'd have to have different presenters and that anyway. But you'd think still, that, you'd think the schedule would be the same, similar. I think there's it? probably a lot of red tape and a lot of licensing issues and a lot of um, distribution Actually, no, rights that issues that was... and stuff. I think there's probably a lot of um, hoops that they've got to jump through in order to get it to work. And I don't think it'd be nice if they could, but I, I don't. I think the bureaucracy is there so that they can't just release something on the same day or whatever and even you know game yeah, of the Thrones. bureaucracy was there for a world that no longer exists it's also yeah, about exactly. marketing though it's all it's also about it's not just publishing deals and and I mean, i'm sure that does you know embargoes and things like that they kind of stop stop things from happening when when it maybe could otherwise but mm. you still have um, you still have problems with um sorry i i'm gonna have to go to the toilet because I can't think at the moment. I need a wee so much that I'm pushing myself up against the desk to, to try and stop it. Go on, Chris. Sorry, everybody. Um, this is very unprofessional, but uh, I'll let these guys continue. Is that technical difficulties button you have any? Yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> He's weird himself. Of Chris, like, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the whole Japanese thing, I mean, that, that's been going for ages with games, hasn't it? I mean, it has. a lot of the RPGs, yeah. certainly. Um, really struggled to get over here. I mean, I'm surprised we got stuff like Suikoden. Well, we got we Suikoden 1 and 2, but Suikoden 3 was never released in <laughs> Europe. Which is so... St like, I agree with Steve. We don't live in that world anymore. Like, the, re yeah. the rest of our lives isn't like that, and there's no reason why, specifically, I guess, things like TV and games should be anymore. I... Mm. I don't I see. Understand. They're, they're not help. They're not helping themselves make money by not letting us do this stuff. Yeah. If I could watch like Game of Thrones and HBO pay per view yeah. uh, on the UK site, I would like, pay per view yeah, it. Probably, I like it enough. <laughs> and they'd be like, "What? Well, it's a couple of TV shows from America that I want to watch." And it's like, I "Want to watch Legend of Korra on Nickelodeon?" And I can't watch it in the UK. Have to be in the US to watch it. It's like, why? Why don't you just let me watch it? What's the problem? South Park is like the same. You can't watch. Yeah. You can only watch South Park on if you. And Comedy Central, if you're in America, it's like, mm. and because of reasons. I like, think probably all, all of the law and the the kind of the like I say the red tape that it wraps this stuff around moves at a much slower pace than the mediums. You know, our internet connections have become incredibly fast in the last few years. Laws don't move that quickly. Yeah, but it's one of these things where the laws are put in place in order to protect people or protect property or have you. They actually only get changed when there's a forced need to and. That false need only comes when there's some type of financial implication. And At the minute, now, these companies say. aren't losing money per se. They're not making as much money as they could be if they were appealing to a global audience. But they're not losing money in the the markets that they've historically been involved in. So there's no push in order to change these laws. At the minute, there's a push from the public, which is slowly gaining momentum. But it's not the point, you know. We're never going to get a law changed tomorrow because I want to watch Game of Thrones on HBO. <laughs> it's when HBO want to start broadcasting globally that that law will then get reviewed. But the same thing with the Japanese games on import. It's like, yeah, but it's the case that we're here going, here's my money. Can I have the yeah. thing? Please me, I take, have it. take this. <laughs> I've got, but I have all this money. Do you not want me to <laughs> give you money for your product? I, I mean, I can't just play with give it. it to me. <laughs> I want to play your, your strange Japanese game. Why can't I do that? Sam. Hello. On average, how often do you buy games in a shop these days in comparison to PSN? Um, I pretty much don't. If I buy a hard copy now, <laughs> I do like I do, like you do. I would buy it on Amazon or somewhere or Play or wherever. Oh, okay, sorry. I meant um, hard copy. Hard copy, I <clears throat> still do. It depends on the game. I'm more inclined to download one if I'm on a sort of like... Oh, I'll try it out. I don't know why. If, I, if I, it's a game that I'm looking forward to, and I'm already decided I'm going to get, I usually get a hard copy sent over when via I, Amazon or something. When I play console games, I always want a hard copy. I have never bought anything online apart from DLC from Xbox Live occasionally. Uh, I bought a few arcade, you know, the Xbox arcade games um, because you couldn't get them anywhere else, and I wanted to try them out. But I didn't. I don't. I consider them casual games. They're not like the ones that I've got. They're not full on. There's no, I don't know. I can't, I can't really. I don't know how to define casual versus a, a real game. 
a hardcore game or whatever. But that's another topic, probably. But when I but when I buy games for my PC these days, it's all online. It's all. I never buy a. I'd never go and really buy a hard copy. I mean, I think last the last one I got was maybe Skyrim. The, well, I, I didn't buy Skyrim in hard copy. The last last hard copy game I bought was Oblivion in two thousand and six. Got, so that's eight years ago. I got since Deus I bought Ex, a hard copy. Deus Ex Human Revolution because I got a, a limited edition with it when that came out, um, and it, had, it was actually pretty decent that one for for a limited edition. Um, but yeah, I can't. The last, uh, the last hard copy game I bought for the PC, but I've got a feeling that might have been one of the Unreal tournaments. Unreal really? Tournament that's, Three. That's a long time ago, isn't it? I've got I'm a hard copy UT Three, but uh, so that might be later than Oblivion, but. Um, I don't even remember buying that. I only played it once, and my computer wouldn't run it properly, so I never played it again. Yeah, the last hard copy game I got was Dark Souls Two, and that so that was uh, that's quite early, recent. That was this early this year, I guess. It came out in this July or something, whatever it was. Maybe earlier than that. M- Mythal- Mythalos says that his was Civ Five. I again, I got that on Steam. Got it next, you know. I think that's it was quite on recent. A, Civ Five isn't it? was what 2010, 2011. I bought it very recently, like in the last year, I'd say. I thought Civ Five was really new. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, been it's, just, it's, it's just been cranking out DLC for the last twenty years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're uh, you're a little bit quiet, Steak, and you were. Uh, I think your mic may have moved a little bit from your mouth. Hello. So he, he goes, "Hello," really quietly. Hello. There we <laughs> go. Don't wake your neighbours up. Um. So that Nintendo thing you were talking about. Can you download games for your DS? You can on that same that, network. That in itself raises another issue because. Downloading games for a PC, um, it seems a lot more uh, feasible because if I run out of hard drive space, I put another hard drive in. Yeah. That's not a problem. <laughs> if I run out of space on a 3DS, then I can't just put another memory card because I've only got one memory card slot and that memory card is being used at that moment. Mm. I can't very easily transfer the information from the memory card to another one unless I use a bit of third person software on the PC. Yeah. Do you not so have like a limit? Do you not have like a Nintendo account cuz I've got lots of games downloaded on my on my PlayStation Network account but only a certain yeah. number of those are on my console at any given yeah, moment. Yeah, you do. And if I were to remove the game from the card, I could download it again for free. But I don't play one game at one time. I might be playing mm-hmm. several games at the same time, so all them games would need to be active on my card. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And I think it's got a 32 gig card in which, as everyone knows these days, doesn't really hold a lot. I am absolutely... I am absolutely... I've just realised I'm petrified of putting anything on my console hard drives, apart from save games. Yeah. Everything else is... Um, maybe DLC again, you know, but that's it. I'll, I'll install something on my Xbox 360, but I'll uninstall it as soon as I finish, finish with the game. I think you, you, because we have like 8 terabyte drives in our computers and you've got a 250 gig hard drive in your console, yeah. it's just like you almost don't want to open a web page because amount. it just blows up. We've yeah. got a 500 gigabyte drive in our uh, TiVo box downstairs. It's it's <laughs> it's novel. I tell you, everything. You, you, every you other see one the has bar been... going down every time you're recording something. <laughs> yeah. One one movie. That's it, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think it's 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 kind of safe to say that digital, yeah, digital downloads and digital distribution is is accepted enough by gamers. Even the hardcore gamers, I'd say, for it to live on, I think it's going to be the new way, as as we've all pretty much said. Yeah. I think for hardcore gamers, especially when it comes to PC, the uh, the digital download is overtaking the hard copy because, for example, the new Borderlands release, I was able to play that at one second past midnight on release day <laughs> yeah. because I preloaded it, which is something that you could never do. I could have perhaps went to the shop and queued, but you don't have to and queue. Bought my copy at midnight and I could come home. Install it and then play it, yeah. but it was already installed, it was ready to go. The, there's nothing on this planet is worse than waiting in a queue at four or two o'clock in the morning or whenever it is. In, in a game shop. It, it, near, yeah, near a game shop with a load of smelly geeks just like you, all dressed in the pants in tents, yeah. you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, there's nothing worse than that, and I'm so is that, is, glad I never have to do that ever again. Has everyone here been to a midnight launch of something? Yeah. Steve and I, Steve and I um, tried to get an Xbox 360 and we ended up at like 2 o'clock in the morning driving around every town and every like 24 hour Asda in, in We eventually region. got one from North Allerton, didn't we? 
you got one the yeah. next day. We had to go to bed. <laughs> 30 miles away. Yeah, oh, no, we, we, we were driving in the snow. It was a blizzard. <laughs> Dedication, that one. Do you know what? And how long after you did that did it red ring? <laughs> Sorry? How long oh, after um, you bought it did it, it red ring? It lasted about eight months before the first red ring. <laughs> I, um, when I got my original Xbox, uh, I got a limited edition. It was like, I think it came, when it came out, like that week. Um, I, I got a limited edition green one and um, I, I bought it put it down in my flat and didn't play it for six months <laughs> I, I I was dead excited because I went to get it early like on a morning, I didn't wait in a queue or anything but I went to get it early because I pre-ordered it and it, and it was like, I didn't use it I, I, I don't know why I did that but it's, it's one of my gaming stories uh, Zombies <laughs> has mentioned something and, and it, it's got a really good point actually that he misses the days when you could just have boxes on the shelf. I've got a shelf just full of games. All that yeah. shit down there is basically games and cables. Right. Well, and that's not really. Displayed. I'm talking about putting it all on the shelf and having your mates come around and go through your collection. Go, oh, oh, look at that! Ooh, look at oh, this you've, one. Yeah. You've got, yeah. Oh, you've got that. Really? Oh, can I borrow this one? I've, uh, no, I've, you I've, can't. I've got that downstairs. <laughs> you and, don't and bring yes, them back. You. I'm, I <laughs> sit there watching people when they're, they're looking through it. It's like I'm sitting there going, "Ready to go? Nope. Nope." You no, in fact, someone asked anyway. me. Someone asked me if they could borrow my twin snakes uh, on the GameCube, and I said I just down outright said no, mate. Sorry, it took. It cost me fifty quid. Like what? it cost me fifty quid on eBay because I, I was trying to get it for a few weeks, and I just I kept missing a, a bid, like quite low bids. So I decided to go for a higher one, and I, I ended up getting it. But you've never even played it, have you? No, not yet. But <laughs> <laughs> and after that's playing through Metal Gear Solid One already, you're not going to come play that, it in the like, future, are you? That's why you're I like wanted to play collector. it. You're like a wine collector. I you am just, with my games. You just I'm put afraid. them in the put them in a shelf in a cupboard somewhere. Fucking right on boasting, by the way, Mythalor. Too right on boasting. It's taken me in my entire. It's taken me 32 years to build up this collection. <laughs> it's been my life from from birth, pretty much, from Postman Pat to whatever the latest game is. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I certainly do miss about um, about buying games from shops uh, is the kind of uh, like the window shopping aspect of it, where because you didn't yeah. have the internet, you know, I'm talking back in the days when like the PlayStation first came out, or even the Mega Drive type of area, the uh, Super Nintendo, you'd go into a shop and you'd be like, "Ooh, I haven't seen this one. Ooh, what's this?" And you'd be you just that's, be spent hours looking around and reading the backs and trying to imagine what the game would be that's like. It, that's exactly why when I went in the shop the other week, I walked around and I went, "Seen that? Seen yeah, that? Yeah, that's about weird. That. That. I've never Not really thought about that. that. Well, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that, but I've no point in me looking at it. And then I went. <laughs> is, is that because we're we're so connected to all the news? Well, because we're on the internet now. Is it because we are so such hardcore gamers that Social we just networking. know everything that's out there? Twitter. There's no, there's, Twitter there's gives no me look- all of my games news. Yeah. All of it, everything, and and it's not the good thing about that is that it's not from a single source. It's not from BBC News or or the ga- you know a gaming news website. It's from everybody, and it's all the articles, and it's everyone interested in it because you just that's why I, I, I'm not. I didn't think I'd be a Twitter fan when I, when I first signed up to it. I signed up to it for business reasons, and it is absolutely amazing. That that is a distribution platform to an extent or that is at least an advertising platform for distribution platforms promotion platform yeah, yeah and it's, it's amazing though when it's you think not about actually it. a bad thing this whole not know, like uh, knowing everything that's on the shelves thing because i bought some really shit games for oh, mega yeah. drive and the playstation oh, yeah, yeah, like, i bought lone soldier for the playstation <laughs> I, right. because <laughs> I can I, even that. after i read the, all the magazines you said don't buy this game it will give you cancer i, <laughs> I just looked really good game like, it can't be that bad, surely. Right. 3D. I bought Tunnel B1, which was a full price game. It was shit. It was such a bad game, but it looked great. I've learned that I've learned the hard way, and I've done exactly the same. I bought so many crap games, or games that I've not been asked about playing, and they've just sat in the sh- on the shelf. But I did it again recently. I went to um, that Play Expo that I keep talking about in Blackpool, and I-, I went into the retro section, and I bought some SNES games. Just from looking at the back of the box, because I didn't know what they were, and I, I, <laughs> right, I bought one thinking it was nostalgia and thinking I had a great time playing it when I was a kid, and it was a bloody Mickey Mouse Disney game. Mm, it is Castle of Illusion. So, it's somewhat like I know it's not that one. No, I think it's 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 one that wasn't very well known, and yeah. Mickey's shitty adventure. <laughs> Shitty's Mickey adventure. Yeah, no, I, 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 I decent sells mini for crap. At least I put it in though. I put it into my <laughs> SNES and <laughs> I had a go of it and thought. Why did I buy this? This was eight quid. 
Eight we quid. Went, uh, now you mentioned the, the whole retro thing. Uh, another shop that Steve and I went into at the weekend was a dedicated retro gaming shop, or pretty much dedicated. And that was brilliant. That was the nostalgia factor of what they had, like Amigas and and um, an Atari ST in there, and all they had. They had a, they had a, one of your joysticks, Chris. You know the yeah. the navigator or whatever it was. The the, red the one. Crampinator. <laughs> Yeah, they had one of them <laughs> on the shelf, and it was brilliant. And it had like rows and rows of Mega Drive and SNES. I've seen and, a few uh, shops like that, not yes, not locally, games. but that was that, really that was cool. that was one of the things I wanted to bring up. Actually, not specifically retro games, but the second hand market. Because in essence, mm. we used to go into shops and flick through the the second hand section to see if there was anything that was a couple of quid that had a crack case or something and no, or no manual and then you could get like good bargains back in the day that kind of stopped when the DRM thing became bigger and now yeah, it's it, got to a point where you have to go to a specialist shop to get these or, or conventions well I was just going to say that a whole look the whole when Zombie mentioned looking through the um, the, the shelves and stuff and people say oh, can I borrow this you couldn't do that these days anyway because they need a key and they need to be registered online and if you put the key in online it wouldn't work so you wouldn't even be or someone, yeah, someone's key. already re re revoked the key so but something else Steve once mentioned this and I laughed I laughed so much at it uh, the idea of pre-owned games games that someone has owned <laughs> <laughs> like I've owned that game all oh, right, <laughs> pre-zero so and easy. Yeah, you're playing the game that someone's already owned. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sam, your camera's done it again. Technical <laughs> difficulties, guys. We're gonna just very quickly switch cap Sam's cam off and then on again. Right, and we'll see how how that goes. Um, yeah. So I mean, that used to be a big thing, though, didn't it? Going into a shop. Yeah, I mean, you remember with, uh, mm. chips in Middlesbrough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Chips used Stockton to be as well, um, Chips, for people who don't know, used to be um, it was a, a local game store that then started running franchises. But it was run by two guys who really were passionate about games. You know, I think there's still children. We used to go in, and there used to be a case of, "Oh, come here, guys! Look at this! This has just came out, and try this and try that." So they kind of got you really involved, and you you were able to play games before you actually bought them. But that well that that's again yeah, that one th yeah thing I wrote on that I used to go to Debenhams and used to play NES games. You used to be able to go into a game shop, ask the person behind the counter, "Can I have a go of this game?" and yeah. then put it on for you because you couldn't get all the demos, you couldn't get all the uh, downloads or online copies or anything like that. It was just y you went in blind essentially. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. Not only that, but uh, this is something that tie again ties into the to the Netflix stuff we were talking about earlier, renting. Renting games used to be a great way of finding out which one I wanted to buy. I never I used got to do into that the all whole the time. Game I used to do it all the time. I used oh, to rent a game at a weekend. And if it was a type of game, because obviously you have to remember a lot of games can be done in a weekend. Like, I rented Metal Gear Solid and completed it in a weekend and was like, that's awesome. I want to play that again. I have that as a game in my collection and then bought it later. Quite a lot I of games always I had that with. Had the, again, it's, it's a psychological thing, but. If I play a game, I want to own it. Mm. Not as in play it very well, but as in I, I want to purchase yeah. it and have it in my you know, collection. I'm and the whole rental thing just kind of thought, well, if I'm going to play a game, I'm going to enjoy it, then then give it back at the end of it. That just doesn't seem right. I am the same opinion of you now, but back in the day, I used to I used to rent all my nes and says I said that earlier. What I, if sorry. it was shit? That's the that's the bonus of rental. You rent a shit game and you go, well, that only costs us two fifty, and I can fucking yeah, it, it, back it and not care about it. Did happen? It. Yeah, Myth Mythalos just said the uh, the chips in Newport um, is still open. Uh, the, that's the, the white. Newport, oh, right? Yeah, okay. So I O W. <laughs> that um, might not be. That might not be the same franchise. I'm pretty sure. No, it won't. but there is also a chips in um, North Allerton, or there was up until a few years ago. It's if it's not one, there now. The uh, big one, wasn't it? Well, I used to actually work in chips when I was a student, so I used to work in the warehouse, so I used to distribute the games to all the other chips franchises. Um, and there's definitely one in North Allen. Still now, I think there still is. The, the, yeah, but I think that that's no longer a franchise, because the franchise collapsed. Yeah, yeah. So the franchisees actually bought out the rights for their own stores, and they're running them as independents now. The first time I ever played or even saw a Nintendo 64 was in chips. They had like a kiosk, and it was amazing. Like, just look beautiful. The ga the games were just unbelievably smooth and pretty. Yeah. You used to have arcade uh, machines set up in there as well. Mm. Yeah, they had a, they had a aliens, uh, some kind of aliens arcade game. Yeah. There was a. But it was 
as a distribution method, though, like Steve said, there was there was a feeling that the people who worked in there had the expertise. They they were the ones in the know who could show you the games and recommend. Them. Remember, we were quite young then, though, when yeah. when we used to do this. We didn't know as much as we now we now know. Those people probably started with computers when they were young. You know, earlier computers and BBCs and Acorns and maybe even earlier than that. You know, the disappointing thing is that now now when I've been in a uh, like game. Um, all the staff seem to be really young and really not very clued up. The game's always been a bit like that, though, hasn't it? Most of the were, yeah, most of the front like those kind of th franchises, at least. Anyway, PC World, you know, that's a great example of it. You, I know oh, you're not going in PC for games, but terrible. PC World is just full of people who literally think they know everything about yeah. PCs, but know nothing. You at walk into PC World, and within about thirty seconds, you get hounded by someone saying, "Hello, sir, can I help you?" And you're like. No, you can't. It's the same. It's the same. In, <laughs> you really can't. It's help the me. same in America, though. That they've got a lot of stores like that. I think Best Buy and Walmart and that kind of thing, and they have salespeople trying to sell them things, not That's, actually knowing stuff about it. I was in PC World anyway. Uh, you go, isn't it? A, a few years ago, up up to Christmas, and there was an old, like a middle aged couple in there, and they were looking at tablets for their son or grandson, wherever it was, and they were looking between the Microsoft Surface, the Android tablets, and obviously the iPad. The iPad being the most expensive. And the sales guy that was there was bullying them into buying the iPad. He was saying basically, because he got his more, words he were, more commission imagine for it. how disappointed X person will be when he opens it and it's not an iPad. And I thought, I what a I, 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 I think Jesus. that's I, to be honest, I think it's quite genuine. In fact, is you know, because if, if, no, if no, someone you, bought me an iPad, I would punch him. Ran, Cram it up, whatever orifice was most. Yeah, but you got to think of the, the sort of people who get iPads in, at Christmas. If they got, if they, if they got the, you know, the 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 Yang Sung super pad. Yeah, but and it had a picture of a pair. Trying on to it, pressurize it, people who can't really afford it into buying some it by, you know, presenting them with the possibility of mass disappointment, especially people who don't know what they're buying as well. It's just yeah. it's it, it it it's horrible, and it Maybe. shouldn't be done. And I know it is upselling. It is part of all, all sales tactics. To be honest, uh, but you never yeah. used to get that in game stores. Be well, I suppose because you're going to buy a game, you're going to spend forty pound anyway. They weren't really bothered which game you're going to yeah, buy. Yeah, they they did start to. They seem to have eased off it. I remember a couple of years ago, I went into game, and it might just be certain staff did it more than others, but they were upselling hard. Like I went in there, and um, they were they were upselling. Everything they were like, oh, just really, you know, you're interested in pre-reserving -re -pre this new Call of Duty game. I was like, no, I don't really care. Oh, do you want to, you know, you can I interest you in this thing we've got on the counter? I was like, you can interest me in bagging up the game, give me my receipt. That's what interests me right now. You can interest me and give me the thing I want to buy. Yeah, the whole the, the thing whole I came in for. The whole reserving thing, that's a big thing now as well. I've noticed a lot of people on my, um, my Facebook feed, like people who were kind of slightly more casual gamers than us, but still, still gamers. Do that? They'll they'll actually reserve the game, or they'll even go in just to look and then say, oh, "I ended up reserving the game." We are such snobs. We are such we, snobs. Um, we talked about this already as well with the Assassin's Creed thing that I am cured of reserving. I will. I'm happy to wait that extra few days. If and you I'm don't not get saying, it, I'm not, to... I'm not saying that you should see. You should definitely depend on critics for your reviews. But if every critic is sort of saying the game is shite, then there's probably something in that. I'm you know, totally behind you, Sam. Helps and I'm gonna, bit. I'm gonna do another call to action because every time we talk about this, I say it. Stop pre-ordering your games because <laughs> it, it just ruined. It's ruining the games industry in terms of the quality is going down because the publishers, uh, sorry, the developers aren't putting as much effort into games anymore. We're getting shoddy quality games. We're getting games that are released with bugs because they have to hit a certain deadline or whatever, and or they have to. Um, they, they, they have to full, yeah, well. it has to be churned out because people have pre-ordered so much, and it just it basically validates that way of working. It validates them not putting as much effort in. In in my eyes, one, one of the one of the evils that's come out of Pandora's box of digital distribution is the um, the whole current cycle of Kickstarter, then a post Kickstarter fundraising campaign, then an early Stretch access goals. campaign. No, I'm talking about after you finish your stretch goals and everything, you've done your Kickstarter, you've made three million in Kickstarter, then you go and sell the same things to people after Kickstarter, so the same goals, so the same reward levels, tiers, and then you do an early access and get people to pay 20 quid a pop for it to play early. You know, there's games like um, like Star Citizen, which have made $50 million 
so far from that sort of tactic. Elite Dangerous is selling for 50 quid for the beta when it'll be 30 quid for the full game. And then they, and they run a Kickstarter as well. They got loads of money in a Kickstarter. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it was a lot. So you're right, devs are kind of doing this thing where they're making all the money up front. And there was games like um, Double Fine um, uh, Space Base DF9, I think it's called, which they just cancelled, just got bored of making it and just threw in um, all the kind of missing features, released it as a 1.0 and then just abandoned the community. And it's been really slated on Steam because... It was abandoned. I how think. Much, how much did they get given to do that? How, was, that was that a Kickstarter funded uh, thing? I, I'll just take a look. I think that, Kickstarter that sort of is thing perfectly. Me. I think Kickstarter is perfectly fine in the right hands with the right intentions and the right, you know, the right kind of goals. But you need to be very clear. And I think, again, it's the it's the public's responsibility to back the right th- things. Excuse me. Just because you, just because something sounds cool, doesn't mean you should back it. You know, doesn't mean you should be, you should follow it and keep an interest in it. But don't just give someone your money just because you like the idea. Make sure yeah. that they've thought it through and they tell you exactly what they're going to spend the money on. There was a South Park uh, in the uh, season eighteen, the latest uh, no, season, which basically takes the piss out of Kickstarters. Yeah, I just, saw that the other day actually. Yeah, yeah, them trying to get money for doing nothing and. They basically had a thing was just saying "fuck you." That was there. Yeah. Give us money to say "fuck you," basically. Yeah, and it's very true, unfortunately. But it, there's you know, been a lot of good things that have come off Kickstarter that, as well. There's, there's been some fantastic projects that have. Back. Oculus Rift, for example, that came from Kickstarter, as far as I, I understand. It is, understand. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, started on Kickstarter and now um, funded by Facebook. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's just human nature that any any new idea like that that, that involves. Um, the public sort of stepping in, unscrupulous people are going to get in there. You, 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 what is it? Your snake oil merchants and all those—they're always going to exist in human society. They're just a part of human life. They're going to find as technology moves on, so do they. You know, mm-hmm. they're just going to find yeah. new ways of doing stuff. Even if it, I'm not saying everyone on, that you talked about on Kickstarter, but there are going to be those kind of people who eventually can manipulate that system, and they've already been paid. They don't have to produce a product. Zom- Zombie's having a bit of a monologue in chat. I'm uh, I'm not following it all because he's writing quite a lot of text, but one of the, la- the the latest thing he said is, I would buy alphas that already show the effort of the team developing the game. Now, I just want to address one thing with that. It's not that I disagree. I think that, yes, I'm the same. I would I would pay for something when I can see efforts being put in. The video's good, you know. I, but that's because I'm educated when it comes to Kickstarter. A lot of people that submit to Kickstarter aren't necessarily game developers or or technical people and they don't you know they don't know how a project is run they don't understand how and I, and I say make an informed decision but it's easier said than done you know I mean I I come from you know I my in my professional life I yeah, there's projects involved and things so you're all, you know it's it, not everybody's like that people mm-hmm. who donate a quid or five quid to get the incentive which is quite often why a lot of people do it they want a copy of the game and an incentive the thing is, marketing and hyping relies entirely on the fact that not everyone is is it educated. Yes, no? and that's no. that's the case. So I mean, it's it is easy for us to get on our soapbox and say, do it this way because this is how it should be done. But we've also got to bear in mind that it probably never will happen. <laughs> It'll yeah. always be like this, you know. It'll get worse and worse and worse and worse unless some kind of scandal occurs, like big scandal. I mean, and I'm talking about big in terms of the scale of something like. Fa- um, something like the oculus thing that happened a while back when they got bought by facebook as you mentioned yeah everyone nearly everyone kicked off about that there were a fair few supporters of it as well and i personally haven't voiced an opinion particularly on twitter but i am a supporter of the facebook purchase because as am i it will de- you know it will develop a, a a hopefully a better business model for them and hopefully a kind of a a, a better technology because they've got more money but bearing in mind that the, of that 2 billion Oculus have seen very little of that two billion. A lot of it has went towards um, paying off people. Uh, not off. I think there's a few um, uh, court cases and things going on, and things like that to do with property rights and things like that as well. I don't know the details, and it's not the show to talk about it. But you know, it's it's just bearing in mind that, as you said, good things have come from Kickstarter. Mm. Went off onto an uh, Oculus Rift tangent. Then, I think uh, it's more more the criticism is that the early access stuff. Which does seem yeah. to be a bit lazy. 
it's like we've kind of almost finished the game, but we want the money now. And then well, we might not even finish it, like in the case of games like Kerbal Space Program, where they just they made the money and they got they lost the motivation. Right. I, I don't know about all of them, but um, one in particular rings to mind, and it's one one of the very few um, Kickstarter games that I've purchased um, was Prison Architect. Mm. Now they're still updating that, and they're still releasing updates, and you can see they're working on it all the time. There's a lot of effort being going into it, but the direction is kind of flappy. You know, it's not. It's we haven't got an end goal. We don't know what. It's because the community is involved, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's and they're that. listening a little bit too much to the community potentially. You know, um, introversion. Introversion have a long history of being indecisive about the the, the direction of their games, yeah. and the fact that the community is involved with this has only compounded that fact. But it's actually a property but, of the company. Yeah, but it's also it's also a good thing at the same time that they're still working on it. If they're making enough money to continue working on a game continuously, <laughs> cool. Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, do you know what I mean? If if you can, if you do you can forever. Um, but people are playing it. There's no release date. So if there's no release date set, you know, a final final date. I mean, they may have announced one. I haven't been following them for a few months, but. Uh, up to a while back, they were still releasing beta 21, beta 22, you know? So, as far as I can tell, they're just pissing about making YouTube videos. But it's entertaining, and if they're making money out of it, Godspeed to them, in my opinion. They haven't right. stopped working on the game. The people who've paid for the game via, via Kickstarter are getting what they want from it. Surely, because they're still working on it. I mean, it's it's good enough to play, it's fun to play. But if the development cycle takes this long and you've, you're have you still playing an in-development game like years in advance, you, you're, never, you're not going to be fussed about... Because there's so many small incremental changes in the game, it's not going to feel like you're getting something new. You're never going to be in a situation... You're never going to be in a position where you're going to get this brand spanking new game and you've got all the time to explore it. You're going to get a half ass game and then get bored of it before it's finished. But when they yes. launch... Exactly, when, I was going to say that. When they launch, they'll have another campaign and hopefully they'll... I mean they would get an influx of people who want to buy the final product. But it'll be secondary fans. It won't be the people who are really interested in the product. It'll be the people who are casually interested in the product. But how many people are actually really interested in it? I mean, how oh. many? I mean, even, I mean, me and Steve have both said that we've bought the game, we played it to death for a while, and then we stopped playing it. Just because we got discovered bit... everything you can discover. There's nothing new in it, is there? So... But there's also different types of people who <clears throat> who play who buy these games. There's people who do follow it and are continuously playing it. Look at look at us playing Terraria for God's sake. You know we we we're addicted to it at the moment and we keep going back in even though we've done a lot of it. It's that kind of quality that 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 game has it. I think to certain people because we just keep gotta releasing keep going new and features. Make sure you haven't destroyed any more of my door. <laughs> It's to area it three game, blocks at the that, bottom, man. It's all it, it is. Was. To area, it's to area <coughs> yeah. early access thing, or is that no, finished, it's finished game? It's coming out on PS Vita. It's coming out on PlayStation Network now. Uh, this week, or last week, it came out or something. Um, been out on PC since two thousand eight, isn't it? Terraria, it's been around for a while. About ages ago. The interesting thing about Terraria is that they've put a lot of content in the game already. They've got a finished product, and now they're supporting the product. And as more people buy it. And give them more money, they've got more resources to spend on the game, and you could see them doing that. It's not a case of having a half assed product, like here's our 2D Minecraft thing where you can kind of do a few things, give us some money for it. It's I'm like, here's a game that we put a lot of effort into from start to finish to give you a, an actual game playing arc. And has an amazing to, uh, community built around it as well now. Yeah. To, to, to go back to, again, the old way distribution versus the new um, demo discs. This uh, what this early access stuff sounds like is the newer but slightly crapper version of a demo disc because a demo disc was it was a small section of a game that you knew was going to be completed, whereas you could get early access to a game and you paid for it, but you didn't have to pay for a demo disc usually, uh, but it might never be finished. I don't know. There's something about that that whole system that doesn't appeal to me at all. Like I have no interest in playing an early access game. I'd be like, well. How about give you full access when it's finished? I, I'm I'm with you when I've got my console head on. I would never buy a, an early access game for a console. But then again, I would never buy anything online for a console until it's the only way to get games. You know, I'm always going to buy my CDs because it's a self-contained thing. I think that's what it is in my head. I'm I want the game to be self-contained. I want to have it there physically. I want to be able to put it in and load it. You know, rather than clicking something in. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know why I'm not really there with the consoles yet but 
I guess what I'm saying is I don't really see the appeal of paying for it and playing an unfinished game. I, I'm not interested. But some in of it. them are some of them are almost complete and they're very very good. You know, it's not. Yeah, I, the example of uh, Cabal Space Program. I think they're they're getting quite excited because they're going to be releasing into beta soon. The game has been around for well over a year. Mm. But beta uh, but, is quite a big step, though. Yeah. When but the game itself, even in alpha phase, was incredibly functional. Uh, and you could lose hours. Well, I, I've i lost hours and hours playing it. I it's really not need a completed it. game, but it still entertained. Uh, and still does entertain me. Mm. They are releasing updates for it. There's an Asteroid pack update uh, a few months ago. Just um, just on the, well, we kind of before we go off the subject entirely of Terraria, Mythlaw has mentioned in chat that um, they actually finished development when with the, thought it was finished, and so they just abandoned it. But then when it had a console release, they got a renewed vigor for it. And so look, if you back. if you notice on the on the wiki, Terraria's uh, cons the console has got some exclusive content that the PC doesn't have, but the same applies the other way around as well. Mm. But it seems to be that the console's getting more updates, but it's still nice that they're still working on it. And mm. and it was finished, and I don't know how finished it was because I wasn't playing it then. So I'd like to say I'm. Po I think I possibly mentioned this before. Ooh. Ooh. What's oh, that sorry about that, guys. Out. Can everybody um, turn the cameras back on? Uh, I didn't turn it off. Uh, oh. I just come up with the sign saying I need Skype Premium. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't. I thought that was just me. Okay. And so. everyone's uber dark now. Oh, sorry about I'm this, dark guys. Anyway. <laughs> um, I yeah. can't see any of you three, by the way. Right, okay. Just gonna um, just gonna drop the call for a second, guys. We'll be we'll be right Danny back. Pops to the toilet. So I'll be back in a second. To be continued. Commercials. Go and watch an advert. Hello, everyone again. Hi. Hi. Sorry about that. We had a bit of a, a Skype. A shite? How do you? Call it? <laughs> How can we make Skype and shite put together? Just call it. A, just call it a Skype up. Skype. A Skype. Skype. We had a Skype up. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. We just had a bit of a problem with Skype. It just went completely crazy mental, and we were all living with no lights. It wasn't working for some reason. Anyway, we're back. What were we talking about? Uh we were talking about Terraria. Yes, Terraria. Yes. Early access. The, um, I think I made the point anyway, so, yeah. Yeah, well, anyway, basically, we all love Terraria at the moment. We're, we're thoroughly enjoying it. But it's got nothing to do with distribution platforms or other games, so let's not talk about it anymore. But we were talking about, like, distribution of games that are in, currently in development, so it was kind of tied into that because wasn't Terraria released as one of those? Or was it not? I don't know. I don't know how we got onto Terraria. I wasn't talking about it, you guys, where I haven't played it yet. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm responding to someone in chat. I thought you guys may be responsible enough to continue on your own then for a second. Yeah, I, I, but I, I, yeah, not. We're not responsible at all. Anyway, you so are the host. You must lead us. One of the one of the thing one of the thing that um, I I've me briefly mentioned uh, previous to this is um, obviously shops going into shops and buying buying games. Now there's been quite a lot of retailers or, or game people that would. Uh, sell games that have either come under half times or actually closed down. We've got Zavi, HMV, if you remember. They had a, a bit of a, a time yeah. before. I don't know if they were bailed out or not. I can't remember now. Well, Game did as well. Sell a lot of games. Game, again, Game Station. This was a, a few years ago, actually, now, isn't it? So it's, it's fairly recent. But they, they've they reanalyzed like, their marketing strategies and the, uh, they seem to be doing okay again. Yeah, because all they're selling is Minecraft merchandise and Call of Duty. Exactly. So they're still they're appealing to the wider audience, but it, they, you don't go there for games anymore. Oh, now, I I mean I can't think of the, the the only other distribution platforms that I'm aware of, um, are things like eBay, which we haven't mentioned. Now eBay is a unique way of buying a computer game, and I use it for my retro games. Oh, pretty right, much yeah. exclusively yeah. I do occasionally buy modern games on there but very very rarely it's usually stuff that I can't find anywhere else or you know it just so happens to be out of a sale and I'm I'm miffed that I've missed it for the price it was on and you know I can't I find it anywhere I'd, else I don't know if I'd risk buying a, a modern game on eBay because I just expect to get a box with a code that didn't work anymore mm. 
Uh, as it feels like the wrong place to buy new games when yeah, there's already out, like re reputable outlets that new, sell new games. But yeah, as I said, my, the retro I think is perfectly fine. And again, I yeah. found some pretty rare games. I got um, uh, Secret of Mana on there recently. Have a guess how much I paid for that. We have Forty quid. Pound. No, no, eighty pounds. Eighty quid. I think it was sixty or eighty, one of the two. And I've played it for about two minutes. Um, I had um I had a copy a, a pristine copy of Zero Wing at the height of the all all your base I belong to us thing, and for those who don't know the music there for that came from Zero Wing, the whole quote stuff, um and I sold that for forty five quid at the height of that meme. Hmm. It's <laughs> it, you can well we all know what eBay's for and the pitfalls of it etc. But yeah, so that eBay I eBay also you could also buy things brand new from eBay from. Well, that's yeah. what they're pushing them under. They're trying to say now that eBay isn't an auction site anymore. It's a, it's a shop, mm. basically. It, it can be both, I think. But do you remember when Amazon did that transition from books only to pretty much everything under the sun? Do you remember when it yeah, was just books, great, Amazon? They used to be just a bookshop, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And there were, there were, you could get some great stuff on there because, again, it was people going on selling their own books. But you think about how many secondhand bookstores there are in town there's going to be 10 times more people who, who want to sell them at car boot sales and all kinds of other stuff so there's going to be loads of people who want to sell them but yeah now it's just turned into a complete marketplace where you you pretty much can find the cheapest thing that's not specialist if you know what i mean so if we for example wanted to buy a new uh, uh if i wanted to buy a new indie game for whatever reason first thing i'd look on steam because it's on the, and then i'd look on humble bundle and then i'd go on to somewhere like Kinguin, and if I couldn't find it at a decent price in any of those, then I'd look on eBay. Potentially. I wouldn't even think to look on Actually, eBay not, for games. Actually, not for an indie game, game idiot. Because mm. you don't have hard physical copies of them unless it's a Kickstarter <laughs> with that as a particular thing. Yeah, I, that was an idiotic thing to say, I'm sorry. I apologise. You can take some of my uh, gaming Someone's wings selling your Minecraft on eBay. Yeah. No, you can actually buy Minecraft in packs for PC, can't you? you yeah, you can buy gift cards for it. I think actually. No, you I can buy it's for PC. You can physical buy copy. A hard copy of the game. You have to. You have to buy an account. A, so an account. Yeah, you pay for an account with Minecraft. You have a login. Oh, an account. Your... Sorry. I wonder what you said then. A, an, an account. account. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You don't buy accounts like I'll have. Ah ah ah. That's what I was Ooh, thinking. Oh, <laughs> can I have Count Von Count? I thought please? I thought it might have been some kind of in term for Minecrafties. You know, Minecrafters. Because I'm, cause I'm the, the, the paragon of Minecraft. Yeah, you have to go out and buy a count. Yeah, but you're, you're a paragon of everything as soon as you read an article about something. You. You're one of them. <laughs> you're one of them Google whores. That sounds cool. Let's learn about it and pretend like I know everything. Love That's you. That's exactly what I do, Chris. <laughs> you have no real interests. <laughs> um, but yeah, you have to have an account for that. So you basically pay Mojang directly. And that's the way it's pretty much always been. Um, I bought Minecraft for a fiver when it was in alpha, and now it's 20 quid, but it's the same thing. You buy a Mojang account, or you buy a Mi Minecraft account, and use that login to play the game. So you have to be online with Minecraft as well, do you? Yeah, uh, no, you, you you have to be online to download the latest version of Minecraft, but then you can play it offline. Alright, okay. I've never I've never played it, really. Actually, I mean, I played a demo, um, and I played a mobile demo as well, but I haven't played the actual full game. You're right, you have to be online to log in. But then you can disconnect your internet if you so please, if you live in 1993, um, and play it offline. Bit of an ass around that, though, isn't it? Why would no. you bother? Just... I know you didn't because you used to live on the road. <laughs> <laughs> if, I did, I was, if I said I did, I was lying. Yeah. Did anybody have it in 1993? No, I, I got mine in 1996. did. So what are the what are the downsides of of the fact that we're moving to digital then? Because we talked about it a lot, but we haven't really mentioned um, I mean, in instruction booklets. Yes, yeah, <laughs> quite actually quite handy. You buy well, a game and you're like, right, what the fuck am I doing? Or you need to combine this, that, and the other, and it's like, right, what, how? Like See, you just told me what I have to do and not how to do it. I don't it. think instruction booklets are that relevant anymore because all games come with tutorials. And if we're specifically talking about PC games, you're on a PC. No, but if you the need thing to find is, out yeah, play something, that. just Google it. I reckon this whole thing, the, the whole Should rise be. of digital distribution is, has given rise to the shitty tutorial missions they have to do in every fucking game now. I don't want the... I bought XCOM for my PlayStation and it had a manual that thick in a dual case. 
you know and what? no tutorial, and it was one of the hardest games that I played. I had a learning curve like that. Like a typical and man, I, really I, enjoyed it. I do not read the, the, the instruction manuals unless... I'm going to the toilet and I happen to see it on the side, and I'm like, right, I'll, I'll read that while I'm on the loo, just because I because I it's something to read. But I would I'd never go into them. I never I've never done that. I think the fact that they don't exist anymore means that the only way that the game developers can can concede some kind of a tutorial is to give you an in-game tutorial that you pretty much can't skip. And I hate that. I, yeah. I have, there's very few tutorial missions. Even Far Cry Three, the first part of that. Because I had some problems running it, it kept um, losing the save on, and crashing. Can I had to play through that about four times. I'm, in but, uh, 20 yes. minutes of oh, sorry. tutorial. You, you say Far Cry 3 then? Far Cry 3, yeah, the whole I, way you I have the same. Because my PC doesn't like CryEngine. I had to play through the, the, the intro bit where and, and, and watch the, the movies as well every time. Like, yeah, God knows how many times. It, as amazing as the, 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 the graphics are and how cool Vaz is as a character, watching it four times in a, in a row and taking 20 minutes to get out the same fucking village kind of takes away the, off. Yeah, it takes away yeah. the, the impact of the game So as well, I think actually it? having manuals, even if you don't read the manuals, the fact that they're there means that developers don't feel the necessity to put some kind of inline tutorial in the game. You know, right. All they need to do, though, all they've got to do is, and you're that menu screen when you've got like new game, continue, options, how to play, and there's your instruction manual. Just make yep. it there. Have they it do do that. They do that though. They or, patronize you though. They make you for the force you through in many games. Many games, but not all of them. And, and again, kudos to Gears of War, um, which we've recently played. Whenever they have a tutorial in there, back from the really primitive stuff, which is like overlays on the screen as you're walking. No, no, that's not tutorial. That's a different <laughs> gripe entirely. Um, the you made me lose my train of thought. Yeah, that you can yeah, choose you can left or right, can't you? You can't choose you. left or right path, and it. Yeah, being able to skip them is nice as well. But then it's like in Far Cry, though, when it's tied into the narrative. But that tutorial is is the introduction to the story, also. Mm. So if you if you start the new game, now you can also argue, well, if I already know what I'm doing, I don't care about the story that much, which is, mm, that's debatable. Right. It's sort of they they built that into their narrative as well. Yeah. The I've Elder also... Scrolls games have been have had a lot of flack about this since um, Morrowind. Well, Morrowind had a quite a quick intro, but um, Oblivion and Skyrim both have quite lengthy intros that you can't skip because they involve the character creation. Oblivion, so people... it takes ages because you have to wait but... for those slow ass fucking people to walk through the prison. You're like jumping at the door, going, "Can we go through the door yet?" <laughs> and they're just like, da, 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 "Make it so." Da, da, da. I'm Patrick Stewart. <laughs> I get. I, I almost get like a boner from when he gets to that doorway where you know he's gonna die. It's like oh, finally I'm here. Go in there to get outside. Kick, kick, yeah. Get your ass kicked. Can, honestly, that that I, we watched a speed run, an exploit, a, a glitch speed run of um of Oblivion, and all of the speed run was that that video. <laughs> Yeah, they get outside and just they just yeah. teleport to the it, end it, of the yeah, game. That's it. He just yeah. jumps on something, and that's it. He's finished. Done. Completed it. Dragon <laughs> on fire. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I actually had something relevant to say about what we were just talking about. Tutorials, about the, uh, skipping tutorials, forgotten. Well, how it relates to you the were talking about of... what the <gasps> downsides were to digital Assassin's yeah. Creed for tutorials. I just wanted to mention that. Oh my fucking god! You have almost the entire game as a tutorial, and plus you get the yeah. bloody pop up coming up every five seconds. Even if you turn it off, you still get context sensitive like tutorials and stuff. And it's like some of the games, anyway. I think some of them they then, improved um, it. If you notice our Grand Theft Auto, and this is also a little bit in Red Dead Redemption, where they have a little tutorial hint thing that it appears in the corner of the screen while you're doing off. something, and if you don't look at it and read it that one time, it's gone forever. Yeah. It's like, oh, by the way, here's how you do duels. And I think there was a duel thing that told you to do it. And I was like, right, what am I doing? Oh, I'm dead. Right, it's yeah, not... Yeah, I had right. the same thing. I got, I shot, I got shot because I didn't know what to do in the duel in Red Dead. The, yeah, the, uh, the GTA, Red Dead, they the both do that. And uh, I, I, yeah, I've done it so many times. But the, the recent one, uh, five, is it? Is that the most recent yeah, one? Five. Um The recent one, you can actually see all of the text in your log if you go into the menu which I thought was brilliant but unfortunately it doesn't save between sessions so you don't save each if you've forgotten something you can't go back to see what the tutorial said but again the internet you can look it up yeah, yeah but, but I don't want to ask how about a game to look at a web page some game yeah. facts tablets about were written for. by a 12 year old that's what tablets were invented for oh, don't, don't talk to me about using up. this bloody oh. thing yeah, but do you have any fault 
that that should be just they should put relevant information that you need to have access to in the game itself. Why should I have to go and search for it somewhere else? They should put it in there. Yeah, I think that's what Sam said before. Like in, in do you remember the tutorial in Half Life, the original? Uh, yes. You mean going yeah. to the, yeah, the cascade that. thing? It takes no, ages. no there's, there's a separate tutorial mission that you can do that shows you how to jump and duck and stuff like that. It's completely optional. The reason I asked because I knew yeah. half of you wouldn't even remember it. Call of Duty does that as well. Yeah, it does. I, I, I think that's a good way of doing it. I haven't really played the game, but I have seen that tutorial but mission. they also add extra cool stuff into it by uh, in Call of Duty. I don't know why I'm saying cool when I talk about Call of Duty because I don't particularly like the series, but uh, they, they have uh, extra cool stuff in there for uh, like doing it in a certain time you get a certain achievement or you get a certain item fair, or something or to be fair to call of duty call of duty 4 was a genuinely great game i think for what it was for that kind of game they kind of peaked with that one and was like this is how you do it two and it's three were really done better. they were really bad games in my opinion I, I tried to play two again recently it's so terrible that the controls are horrible so i haven't I played any of them don't just don't You've got but better I, games. The, the, the reason we're going on about this is that I, I do think that the, the, the rise of these in-game tutorials has come about because of the decline of hard copies of games with manuals. It's a natural progression, though. As um, soon as you, as soon as you can uh, actually put something into the narrative or program something into the game to teach people how to use it organically, it makes more sense. It's mm. also with, well with the way that. Uh, oh, sorry, go on, Sam. No, you have not, uh, you've not said anything for ages, go on. <laughs> I was just going to say that um, another factor is the environmental factor. We That's ain't right. churning out shitloads of plastic. Oh, right, that environment, right. I thought you went in the game and was like, what? No, instead you know what? of eating up all of our resources with the servers running to, to, in the internet. Yeah, but yeah, you, can, you, could, you could possibly farm, hopefully, a source of renewable energy, but there's only ever going to be so much plastic yeah, you need a... that you can make. You need oil to make plastic. Oil is a massive point of contestation at any time, anyway. So, if we're starting to move away from that type of manufacturing process, then that can only be a good thing, surely. But you also yeah. need oil to burn electricity, and exactly. we're, we're yeah. all going to be doing that anyway. We don't. We don't. We can't. You can there only are ways make plastic there. from oil. You can uh, make okay, electricity okay. from other means. All right. All right. So, you can make plastic from all sorts of things. You make plastic from vinegar and oil. Not oil. Um, <laughs> Just pour some vinegar and some oil. You get a CD. <laughs> <laughs> you have to press it a bit like that. Ah, uh, I can't remember. Just, what it get, was. just pour it in a get some oil, some vinegar. Thing. Pour it in the microwave. Plastic. Mm. Done. Kids at home, try that. <laughs> I recommend that you try that. Put a warning on. Do not try this at home. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck you. <laughs> So there's, there's only one other thing that we haven't really mentioned <clears throat> um, that we've got on our list, which is um, the borrowing off friends distribution platform. Now, you can look at this in two different ways. You can look at it as a genuine, I've borrowed my friend's game, or you can look at it as a distribution platform because of the amount of people that steal games from their friends in that manner. Are you going to talk about Battlezone now, are you? No, but I will mention it while we're on it. <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about it. I'm actually specifically thinking of my original Metal Gear Solid because that's disappeared somewhere. And I actually sent all of you guys, plus another two or three of my friends who play games, that could potentially have borrowed it at some point. <coughs> a text a while back saying, have you got my Metal Gear Solid? Uh, half of my friends responded with, what the fuck is Metal Gear Solid? <laughs> <coughs> the only reason I'd have Metal Gear Solid is so I can take a shit on it. Oh, that, that's, that's harsh. harsh. That is that's harsh. harsh man. Even even after playing through them again and getting really frustrated with almost everything in the games, I'm I still love them. Sorry, still love it. Snake <laughs> is the sorry. man. You're enjoying it anyway. Enjoy. I am enjoying it. it yeah. I'm enjoying watching you fail. <laughs> I, right, yeah, I, I just want you two to play. I want you two to pl to to play. Like keep every time you die, you hand the controller to the other one. We've got to get a session of that going on. Yeah, it'd probably start off on me now. Just stay with the controller till the end of the game. <laughs> oh, here he goes. We'll see. We'll see. That could be king could, win. That could be arranged. <laughs> some sort of future land party that's also a console party, I guess. Well, I was going to take my PS3 to the the last land party, but I completely forgot about it. Yeah, I could, I could, I could pull your mind down, no problem. Anyway, it's not relevant to the no, no. topic. Um, DLC, yeah. we haven't mentioned DLC yet. 
Oh, well, we mentioned it a few times as passing. It's because it used just to be another digital way of. Yeah, but you, you can't really get DLC in a hard format, can you? Well, you can. You downloadable it, content. Can actually. Yeah, but there used to be add-on packs. It used to be like you'd buy Quake and then there'd yeah. be two unofficial add-on packs that come with it. And that happened with all the games, I think, or most of them yeah. anyway. Speaking um, of uh, Rockstar earlier, you could get the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead Redemption as a separate game, which you could actually play without the original copy. So it's essentially a separate game. Or right. it was DLC for your for your normal one. The same goes for the Lost and the Damned and the Ballad of Gay Tony story DLCs for GTA 4. You could buy those, I believe, as, stand, as a standalone game. Mm. They might have been very good as well, aren't they? As DLC goes, they're actually quite full. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. So that, that's get, what we that's what we used to get a CD with with them all on, isn't it? And that, I don't think that that'll ever happen again. You no. do sometimes, as you said, you do sometimes get modern ones, but. You know, but it, they're usually quite big, aren't they? It's yeah, like that's for the big ones. Skyrim would be stuff like Dragonborn, and uh, but they're all downloads. I think I don't think you can actually buy a hard copy of Dragonborn. You've got to get it in the uh, Game of the Year edition if you want that, or the Legendary pack, or whatever it is. You could buy Dragonborn at some point. Could you? De- I'm sure you could. I- I'm not sure if you, you could, can now. Well, but they release like the, the the game of you know how every game is Game of the Year for some reason. <laughs> they release the Game of the Year edition. There are more the game gamers, with... games of the year than there are years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There are years in history. <laughs> um, yeah, you can buy like the special edition of the game. You can buy like the special edition of whatever game with all the DLC included, can't you? Which usually comes out like a year after the original release. Yeah, I think Skyrim that, that's, is a legendary edition. Skyrim yeah, Dragonborn's thirteen yeah, ninety nine on Steam. But well, stuff like that, yeah. I haven't Don't played you it, you know, and I keep meaning to, but neither have I. I've played Don't... the original game for so long that couldn't really bear to go back. To it, in a way, even though I loved it, it was like I, couldn't, I didn't want to go back either. In a weird way, they were always weirdly implemented in in the um, Elder Scrolls game. And it, like, you'll as soon as you start playing the game with the DLC activated, someone will come up to you and hand you a note yeah. saying, "Go here and start your quest." Especially yeah. have you have you started Oblivion, uh, the game of the year edition, with everything enabled? Everything just happens at once. Like you get about <laughs> six notifications. Someone comes running up to you about two minutes into the game, and you're like, ah, I don't know what to do." <laughs> So what comes up to you actually in the prison? Like, I have a note for you. It's like, how did you get in here? <laughs> I think it all happens the second you get out, actually, thinking yeah, about yeah, it. Sure thinking it's thinking still... back. Yeah. It's so quite Looks very pretty, Sky but, uh, Dragonborn. But, but DLC is an interesting thing with distribution and all that kind of stuff because it's it's such a broad subject because the DLC can be, you know, like um, a, a sort of 15-hour game like um, that Rockstar one I was just talking about, the Undead, the Undead Nightmare DLC is a, a, a 15 hour Red Dead Redemption spin off game. That I've you, not played it, it yet, the, and I've got it. The full, wanna... map, the full map's available. You've got uh, alternate Hunter missions. It's all. It's like a mini version of that game, but it's like a 15 hour one as opposed to a 40 hour one. Or DLC can be a hat. Like it, yeah. Yeah. it runs. The, it runs a massive gamut. So horse armor in Skyrim and Oblivion. Yeah. Uh, Skyrim. That yeah, th- there was scary. a big there was a big hoo ha when that came out because they were like really eight quid or whatever it was for for just horse armor. Some people love that shit mm. and they will pay for it. Some people buy crap on their avatars on Xbox Live for God's sake, which has yeah. nothing to do with the game. The amount of people that spent money in um, PlayStation Home when that was around, I think that's close. No, it's still around. It's closing this know. this month, I think, or next month or soon Definitely. anyway. <laughs> yeah, this, this is I'd walked the... around that before, and all it was was a constant stream of people asking me age, sex, age, sex, location. Yep, which is like crisis, like being on AOL back, back yeah. in 1997 again. Yeah, I, I went on it back uh, a while back, and I think I went on some arcade games. I put some stuff I got free in the house somewhere, and that was about it. I kind of, I went right. So I thought Do it was what? going to be a hub that you could jump into games with people. Maybe, yeah. maybe you can now. But back then, I don't, like, you couldn't it, do anything. Do you know what it looked like to me, home? It looked like when... Um, do you remember back in the day when you could get like a PC with Windows 95 on it? And instead of having your normal browser with like your toolbar and stuff, it was a house. That you had, it was a 3D house. that you. This is, I mean, it's just, just my computer that had this when I was a kid. 
and you walked around and if you wanted to go into the word document you had to walk over to an office in the house and get like it was like that would get tedious right, very quickly it was completely stupid at the time it was like oh the 3d-ness of it that's <laughs> the um, that, that's that's the computer from jurassic park isn't it oh, it's yeah. a little 3D, computer yeah. 3d unix interface <laughs> yeah exactly let's it's just like... fly down to the document so just click it for fuck's sake yeah, just yeah. Click it. <laughs> there's dinosaurs outside <laughs> that's basically what playstation home looked like to me it's like right so i walk around just to be a fanny in a pointless 3d environment that's basically got adverts for games that i could just be playing if i wasn't on this stupid thing like it didn't i didn't see the point in it anyway so um to wrap up let's talk about the future a little bit we've got um a few things that are coming out soon there's a you know we've already said that we think digital uh digital downloads is going to be pretty much the future. I mean, I can't think much past that, but there are evolutions of digital downloads. Cloud? Well, yeah. Cloud, cloud gaming. I hate that word. Yeah, I know you hate it. As a the, techie, the as, as someone who, who yeah. has been in the cloud since he was born, pretty much, <laughs> it's it's just a name for a cluster of servers. It's it's just yeah. an easy way for people to... Ide- and, and the thing is, the cloud just makes it... Oh, so I'm getting so angry we, about something that doesn't internet, matter. Should we call the internet a cluster of servers as well? You know, some ambiguity yeah, there. I don't really get what the problem is. Is it just because it's it's the it's because everyone's cloud? fucking using it and it's the big thing now, where it's been the big thing for me forever. You know, it's just it, it's an it's that same thing that I was um I was saying about uh like what we've been talking about with like the old gaming communities that we were in. It's that. They're taking it away from me, you know, they're taking that yeah. uniqueness. You know, it's like someone going off a band because they become popular or that kind of... I have that, but not for the regular things. I've got it for very specific things. Like, the, go on. It is, it, yes. I think it will So be anyway, good. when it comes down to cloud like gaming, you can see the future being something as, right, I want to play this game. You'd pay your subscription or your fee and then you'd just be able to play it there. But, All the files would be stored server-side. And it will just literally stream the content to your computer, which well, makes sense to me because it means you don't have to have it all on your own personal storage. I I hate that. I, hate I know, that. but I think that's what's going to happen. I don't. I hate, yeah, I think that that is what's going to happen. I've I've actually put in the document Gecko, which is um, the PlayStation's uh, Sony's kind of partnered up with somebody, possibly Gecko. I don't know, but they've they've got a streaming service that they should have launched with the PS4, but they haven't done, and it will be coming out soon, but. I'm not. I'm not there. I don't think the technology will be in the conceivable future. I don't think technology will be in a place where I can comfortably play games on something like that. I think I, the latency again will be too much. If it's too much latency to stream something to a computer next to the computer that I'm working on, it will be far too much to stream it from a cloud server in I, London. I don't think that it, that it'll actually stream the entire content of the game directly to your computer, but it will just. Take the files it needs as and what needs them, cache them temporarily, and play Doesn't it on that your computer. The point? That's what it's doing, I believe. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of um, cloud computing. Uh, sorry, cloud gaming is the servers render the game and send you the video feed. Yeah, which that's is what a lot of people ends to it. But I think that there's going to be a, an intermediary step that we're going to experience, whereby you're just using your computer as a local cache. M- Mythalos just pointed out it's actually Geico. Sorry, I forgot. Geico. It's not Gecko. It's Geico. If you heard, you might have heard it being referred to in magazines or potato potato yeah whatever no well i actually said it wrong there i'm sorry <laughs> um no yeah I, I i'm not bought into this at all not because it's cloud and it annoys me the word it's because i want i do want to own my copy i'm, I'm i've only just accepted the fact that i'm buying my copies digitally and i've only just accepted the fact that steam pretty much has me by the balls when it comes to gaming i don't want to i don't want to as we said earlier, I don't really want to temporarily rent my game now. I want yeah, but, to own it. But it's think about it this way: you don't keep all the money that you that you have in your house in it, under your bed. Like you have a bank account that, that your that your credit net worth is stored in. It's but, the same basic principle. It's You've a, not got it all at your place right then and there. You have access to it. You still own it. It's just not physically right there with you all the time. I um I I've got to say, I think. Yes, I agree with that to to an extent, but only if you own it. I mean, I know we, I know there's Eulers involved with every game, and you don't actually own it, you know. But I want to be able to take it away from whatever it is. And most of the games in Steam that I've got are DRM free in some way, shape, or form. 
maybe not within Steam, but that I'll have another download from Humble Bundle or something. And I want to be able to play it when Steam dies. I want to be able to play these games when Geico goes offline. That's an interesting thing. Because games, yeah, that's like, a- games for Windows Live closed down and took a lot of games with it. Did it? Yeah, there's oh, a lot no. of games that relied on it. They wouldn't. They won't even start the game. Oh yes, I heard that actually. And it's all, the thing is, we've always had this with servers and things like GameSpy and that kind of thing. We've we've actually run into it a few times between us at LAN parties where we've not been able to play a game because we've needed GameSpy and there's no patch out for that game to get rid mm. of the GameSpy reliance or whatever. Um, and there's and that'll be the same case. What happened when uh, when PSN goes down? Everyone's up in arms because they can't play a lot of the games. Mm. Same That's goes for Steam. Point. I mean, I, I, Steam doesn't go down these days. Touchwood. I haven't doesn't, seen it for ages go it's, down. It's far too dis- well distributed now. To it go down. used it used to be a major issue, didn't it? Mm. Um, Even uh, only a few years ago, it used to it used to be a pain. It go, went down. You couldn't get any matchmaking, so you couldn't play games but online. E- I think now, though, even if um, even if you're not online, you can still play your Steam games somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you can. I have. I, I'm always online, you, so I don't, you can be I don't in offline know. mode and play games that yeah. you've got on your computer. But again, that wasn't the case a while back, but now it is. But I still this streaming thing. I, I I'm starting to sound like a real old man who's scared of the t- technology in the future. I I'd, I'd never thought I would be. I never thought I'd be someone who who, you know, no like no node something. The thing is, that it's. New. It's it's like a paradigm shift because we're going from somewhere where you have ultimate ownership, i you have a cartridge, you have a DVD, you know, you have a disc, whatever, to the point of now where there's nothing tangible to apply your ownership to. You've got a graphic on the screen, an icon. You've got access. Yeah, and it it is a change and some of that we haven't been brought up with. It's it's not some of that you have. Exp- you, you don't experience it in any other. Media. I mean, fair enough. You got like likes of Netflix and what have you, which is just starting to come to the floor. But that's that's very much the same thing you said earlier. That if if you really like it, uh, like a movie or a, a a TV series, you'll buy the physical disc. That's true. I, there's a couple of things I've seen on Netflix that I've since bought because I had that same thing as Chris. When Netflix dies, I want this. So that should be fair. I mean, I've actually agree with you totally on that point, Chris. But I don't know what the solution is there because I'm trying to think about it technically, and if Geico, if Geico, for example, streams files as you need them and puts them on your hard drive, or it streams the game off the internet, both are invalid. You wouldn't be able to play the game unless you had connectivity. And we still don't live in an age where we always have connectivity. I've got to uh. say, from things that have um, that have gone obsolete, that people still enjoy. The community has stepped in and normally provided something. Even like old MMOs, they've built servers. Like EverQuest, the original EverQuest, people have built servers so you can play a massively multiplayer game which doesn't have servers anymore. So if it's something that is cherished by the community, I think the community will keep it alive. So... In a weird well, what way, about, this is... What about that 30 or 40 quid that I spent on that on a game that doesn't have a community that I love? Well, you screwed, aren't you? That's not good enough. If I've spent money on it, I want I want to be able to use that for the rest of my life. The for thing, whatever the thing is, what what people don't tend to realise is that when you buy a game, you're not buying the game; you're buying a license to play the game. Yeah, yeah. Same with any software. Yeah. That's what, that's what I said earlier. It's we. Do, I know we don't own it with all the EULAs in place and with all of the uh, uh, copyrights and things like that. It's not. We've we've ne- we don't ever officially own the game, but there's nothing stopping us. There's nothing stopping me trying to install Red Alert again. Apart from no. probably my computer won't. It'll be too fast for my computer, and I'll have to hack it somehow. But you have to put it on DOSBox or something. Yeah, probably. well, well there's some of the better stuff, isn't it, these days? But yeah, it's I, I, I. It's nothing stopping me. It's still there. You know, it still works. And if it doesn't work, I will be able to probably get a copy online legally, even if I get it by illegal means, because I've, I've I own the disc and I can. Show it, well, you know. That's actually, the, that's the thing. I think British law has changed recently, so that you can have um, multiple backups of a game, of, of any kind of media. In fact, so mm-hmm. music, you can be, record your own yeah. music to CD as long as it's only for your use. Yeah. So I think in those terms, I think obtaining a download of a game you already own is legal. I would yeah. think. No, it is definitely. But if you only own the game in a digital media like Steam, and let's say Steam went down. 
how would you then prove that you had paid for that game historically? I've got all my receipts for Steam. Yeah, you'd have to have a receipt, wouldn't you? But, again, know, but if you don't have the receipt too. Well, I mean, then that's your own it, fault. Yeah, but <laughs> so even that's if, a responsibility thing. That it's, you can't. Well, the thing is, who would you show the receipt to? Who would own that anymore? Like, if the Steam goes down and you Valve down, goes down, you would download the, the games. That you, you would download the games that you'd want to download. Um, illegally or legally or whatever, right? For free, and then you would. And if someone present, questioned that, yeah, you would say, "Look, if, I, I bought it." Yeah. Right. Fair enough. I mean, th there's very, very little uh, of anything, you know, any game games that I don't own these days. I, I. I'm legitimate. Are the games that I, st I I played, and I haven't, um, I didn't uh, get by legitimate means. I I always bought them if I enjoyed them. If I didn't enjoy them, I'd I'd bin them. You know, I'd get rid of it. Fair enough. I've probably broken the law by doing that, but I still, you know, I still kind of yeah, yeah. I mean, I still bought it afterwards because I I liked the game. But I think if it's not good enough. I think that's I think that's fair in my own head, but I know it's not. Well, that's very much the way fair. that I used to do things with its CDs, movies, or something. Uh, I would perhaps like download um, an album, and then if I enjoyed it, go out and buy it. If mm. not, delete it and never listen to it again. Yeah, it's, it's again we've all got our own little morals and standards, haven't we? And it's, everyone yeah, it's, knows it's that like, everyone does these kind of things, but at the end of the day, it's what you know. It's what the law says, and if you can prove that you own something, and yeah, you've got an illegal download of it. I think I think that's I think you get away with that in court, I'll be honest with you. I don't even think it'd go to court now because of these new rulings, I think. Oh no, of course not. I mean, don't be daft. Unless someone yeah. unless you're a pirate that's, you know, constantly distributing via torrents and, and you're not you're not gonna get you know, taken to court for it, I don't think. I think it's no. a, a bit a bit daft. I don't I that. don't even think you can get in trouble for it now. I think you can legally own any any representation of the media as long as you have bought a copy of it yeah in, in, the, in UK way, law yeah. I think I'm not a, I'm not a you know I'm not a law person but I think that's the gist Lawyer. of this new the gist of this new yeah <laughs> law person I'm the law talking guy <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, anything else with the future though I think or do you think I think thinking a bit too further ahead would be I mean, we're talking and about. I, Go on. I think we sort of covered it with what we've already said. That's the, that's what we're talking about for the foreseeable future. Anything else it, that comes after that is a bit hard to see. In the immediate future, I'm going to be forced to download something that I don't really want to. Well, Namely, Five Four's coming out next Tuesday, yeah. which will be uh, UPlay only. Oh, have you yeah. not play? Have you not got UPlay? Mm. Yes, I have, but I don't like using it. Oh no, I hate it. Every gamer on the planet hates using UPlay. Yeah. Because that has the same problems we've just been talking about. It's often down, though. Often, when a game gets released, it's full of bugs. It doesn't work. You can't launch it. It's terrible. But Origin has the same issues. Not as much, but... Sorry. Yeah. Took, took over there, Steve. Did a bit. Yeah, I think you saved him from incriminating himself, though. What, from... Soft and Wattens by saying that you play as balls. Well, saying that saying Ubisoft that you were going to download something on that you didn't want to download? Yeah, I was gonna to have to download Far Cry Four on Uplay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why do I keep buying Ubisoft products? The 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 games. Because the games are good. Because some of them are really good. Yeah. <laughs> some of them are why really do I keep good. buying Assassin's Creed then? Because they're not good. They're terrible they're games. You said Four was really good. Didn't you? Uh, Four's enjoyable. It's probably the best of the lot so far. I mean, the story on Two is probably better than anything else. But... I th I think with um, Far Cry with Three was a Creed... genuinely great game. Yes, but it's the same game as Assassin's Creed, just three, just three D. It is. It's it's parkour. What? It's the same what mechanic. It's the same mechanic. Assassin's Creed two D. It's the same mechanics. Run around, open up platforms at towers in order to see the map. Go and All do right. fetch quests. Right. Yeah. Follow a story. It's exactly the same mechanic. Every yeah, single Ubisoft game is like that. Yeah, but that's like saying that you know two D side scrollers go to the right till you win. I mean, it's how you do it, isn't it? But it's how you implement but it. But Ubisoft are releasing the same game just in different ways. They're using the same formula that they know works, and they're just doing the same thing every time. I, I it's inexcusable considering well, I know it. I know it in well, my head. I know that they're Star doing Cry this to 3 me. Three was a very very good game. It was the thoroughly enjoyable. I, I'm with you there, and I hate myself for it, but it was full <laughs> of bugs, and I persisted with the game because I wanted to play it so much because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters and everything about the game, but... I didn't encounter that many bugs when I played it. Well, you're not but, on PC with a 
that doesn't like crying. Apart, and... Yeah, apart from, apart oh, from yeah. The, um, the first bit where I had to go through the first mission four times. Otherwise, it was quite smooth. I, I should have counted how many times I had to go through that because I got to different points every time. And I don't know if you rem if you remember, but nearly every single mission in Far Cry is like that. If you if it crashes in the middle of doing a mission, it re it reloads right from the bloody beginning. It's well annoying. All the cutscenes, all of the all the talking on the phone and everything, all over again. Yeah, it's annoying. Yay. But then again, that's my own fault for having a PC that's crashing. So I can't really blame you yourself. For yeah. That. Yeah, can yeah. I? You've managed to get a, well, an opera system to blue screen, which I've never seen a blue screen in. Yeah, which is an achievement. Far Cry Three played obviously it probably didn't look as nice as it did on, on your PC, but it played perfectly on my PlayStation. Yeah, it would do. Mm -hmm. But no, then I, again, I don't think it crashed once. But then again, missions. Skyrim didn't. You had much worse problems than we had with Skyrim. Yeah, and loading it, yeah. times mainly had lag. Although that got sorted out in a patch eventually. Uh, some people had it worse than others, or, or made a bigger fuss about it at least. Anyway. I've got to say, they can't really have it worse on a console, surely. It doesn't work like that, does it? What, sorry? Having the, worse problems the PS, than other people on just consoles. The, the, the PS3 release... port of Skyrim was, was, was quite notoriously bad when it first oh, right. was released. I think right. it was designed for console, but I'm not sure which console. Xbox. Xbox. They were all developed for Xbox. <clears throat> and then when it got released on, I mean, PC, uh, it was definitely designed for console because the interface was so terrible on the mm. PC. And... Uh, they would never have let that go if since, that was a PC since game. Mor since Morrowind had been designed for Xbox, Morrowind was designed for the original Xbox, and then kind of a PC version was dropped on top. Mm -hmm. And it it shows Morrowind actually plays very well on the original Xbox. I've I've never played. I, I played Oblivion actually on the Xbox 360. Uh, I got it. I, I think I paid someone ten quid for about fifty games that they didn't want, and uh, it was a part of that. And I thought, oh, I'll give that a go. So it's like, and it was. I actually got into it quite a lot. But I've still put Nothing more. Nothing ashamed of, Chris. It's no, a still, game. Well, no, no. I just considering I'd already played it to death on the PC. I didn't think that I would get into it on a console as much as I did, but I did. Um, yes. Anyway, so we. Uh, unless there's anything uh, else you guys want to mention, I think we'll do it. We'll wrap up. Mm, no. That's it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think we covered everything pretty well. I'm well, surprised you actually got two hours out of that. You, 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 you always. You're such a naysayer, Lou. You're such a negative Nancy. No, I'm not. Yes, you. See what he did there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mum. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, we'll be back next week, hopefully. Uh, we haven't decided on a topic yet. Well, we shall do that shortly. Can we Can we try and decide on one now? Ooh. Should we get uh, the document up? Is there anyone, I already, yeah. I'd love to do this procedural worlds one that we discussed. Okay, well, we, we can only really do... Well, we... I'd you like can to do get, that, um, but I'm not going to take part in it because I've played one procedural game in my entire life, and that was Rogue Legacy. Okay, well, if we do, why don't we take advantage of Sam being here, and then okay. next time Sam isn't here, we'll do the procedural one. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. And we'll get a guest on because I've got someone in mind for that that I shall announce at a later date. Um, so yeah, well, uh, have you, has anyone else got any other ideas? In fact, anyone in chat have any ideas about uh, what you want us to talk about? Yes, you want us to talk about? Yeah, we've got lots of topics. Um, to be fair, we've um, we look we're running low on the the things that we can talk lots about. But I think to be fair, we <laughs> just what? wax lyrical <laughs> about where. <whatever, laughs> Rupert Potato Power said, in 10 years, people will have seatbelts in case PC crashes. <laughs> I like that. I really like that. <laughs> I want to meet Potato. I really do want to meet Potato because he's oh. he's different. Let's say <laughs> he's a. Well, that's he's, meant to be a compliment, I think. I don't know if he he follows he he follows everything to do with gaming or just follows me around because he's in everything. He keeps, seems to be on all the shows that I, I've done in the past. So, but hello, Potato. You'll have to tell me your real name one day. And introduce yourself if you so ever. His real uh, name is Minesweeper. His, his, I was real say, his, real, is, his real name was Turnip or something. Yeah. Right, so what have we got? We've got um, a, a list as long as your arse. Right, so <laughs> speed <laughs> runs. Yeah. Speed runs is highlighted, and I. That's a, I know. I know Lou can talk about it, but we could also do. You know, we could show a few things in that because I wouldn't have much to say about it. I don't think, but I'd be happy to. I think I'm the only one who would have much well, to say about it. Isn't speed run something that could be talked about as part of the emergent gameplay thing? Because a lot of speed run techniques. Use yes. that sort of manipulation, don't they? Really, uh, well, that's, kind that's, of an offshoot. That's one I want to do for a while, which is emergent gameplay and bugs, like exploitable bugs in games. I We've think that would be. 
We've had our first suggestion in chat. Have we? Minesweeper, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I I've never played Minesweeper, so... Have you not? That's a two, that's a two hour subject, I'm sure. Get it up now. Is it not I don't, on I Windows don't, I don't have any I don't. I don't install the games with my copy of Windows. I don't install Paint either. Oops, I just uh, brought up <laughs> my Windows search and it covered all the Windows. Sorry about that. <laughs> what, you, you, you've never played Paint? I played Paint, oh, we but play I played paint it enough to know that I hate it. I don't want to install it. <laughs> Right, yeah, so I'd, we've, I'd like uh, to do that. We've got uh, so we, we we can do speed runs. Of, we've we've got some controversial topics that we we may uh, talk about at some point, such as um, uh, movies blah, 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 and games, violence in games, yeah, oh. um, yeah, nudity, sex, etc. Also, uh, girl gamers. Now, obviously, we, we we would want to maybe get the opinion of a girl gamer if that is the case. So we'd have to get someone on, but. Um, is that in case we say something really stupid? She can sort of call us on it without. Well, <laughs> the thing is, I don't think any of us. I don't think any of us are, uh, w will necessarily go down that route. I'll be honest with you. I, I think, think we're all. No, we're all. None of us are kind of sexist pigs, chauvinist or twats or anything. Yeah. No, I mean yeah. apart from Steve, but we'll we'll probably not have Steve on that week. Simple as that. Fair enough. <laughs> he's usually he's usually pretty quiet anyway. He'll probably just sit there and listen. <laughs> um, we've got uh, we've got early access games which we've pretty much talked about and covered in this one. I, I, I think, I think we, so. I think we can strike that off the list to be honest. We've got things like indie games, um, AAA games. We've got uh, game developers, game developers. Well, yeah, in, or, you could cover both vehicles in games. We've still got those kind of shows we can do. Um, immersion, emergent gameplay. Uh, I really want to do emergent gameplay. You do. You do. I do. I really want to do it. Let's. I'm, I'd be happy with that next week. Then. I'm up for that. Emergent gameplay. Now, for anyone who does not know what emergent gameplay is, because it was something when I first heard about it, I had to look up what the hell that means. Um, it's basically gameplay mechanics that come out of you playing the game and accidentally doing something. So, for example, trick jumps in Quake, um, being able to uh, rocket jump and, and throw yourself across the map, or you know, do things that enhance the the experience, but aren't cheating or aren't bugs and glitches or aren't considered bugs and glitches. Yeah, S sim things that weren't intended. Taking advantage of the physics within the game. Yeah, so, well, a simple Not explanation is is doing things in the game that you weren't meant to do. Yeah, and it's it's something that we all do un unconsciously. I think some sometimes. Well, it's like. You know when when you know when you find yourself in a situation where you're in a game and you don't know the way out of a room or you don't know where to go next and you end up trying to climb up a wall and you yeah. know when you're halfway up the wall that this is not the right way to go and you're never going to get over that wall but you try it anyway. When you actually do get over the wall, that's when it becomes emergent. When you found a way to beat the game. Yeah, well, to an extent, no, it's it's one of those things that. That's let's one let's part save of it for gameplay. the topic. Let's yeah. save the yeah. let's save that for the for next week. So yes, next week we'll be talking about emergent gameplay. You heard it here first, live and online. And uh, Lou's going to be probably very excited about that. And I expect Lou to do the document and update it and get it all. Uh... I'll do the document for that. See, we're not we're not using the document as much as we were, but we now have uh, a nice little concise think, list of things. I think for emergent gameplay some videos would be nice because there's some yeah. funny stuff yeah, like yeah. Definitely. It's not yeah, yeah, and again it's not just using it to your advantage. It is as Sam rightly pointed out, it's uh, it's about maybe things be like for example in um uh Halo, the the jump, you know, making grenade warthog jumps jumping. and well, yeah, warthog stuff and uh doing trick jumps in GTA that weren't intended to be trick jumps. Some things have actually come out of it such as um uh, tribes and the skiing, for example, mm -hmm. the skiing came from Tribes One because of a physics bug that Chris, became. Stop yourself. You're talking. talking you, you listed it all. No, no, I was. I was just. I'm giving yeah. people examples. Anyway, sorry. You get it yeah. next week. You got next it. Week. You got it. <sighs> Getting told off by my guests. I don't know. Oh, we're guests. <laughs> I thought we were co-hosts. When did Whatever. This you you gotta not fucking do anything. I'm, I'm the only how one here doing anything. I was supposed to do a jig, but I'm sure I've just done many, many jigs in a row there. Uh, he did. He did do a fair few jigs there, and, and oh. you can tell when Lou starts like, getting excited because the jigs come out. It wasn't. Didn't you say that I had to do a jig specifically for something? Was it? Um, I sort of noticed she said something on Twitter. Yeah, I forgot. I had now. to do a jig. A jig for summer. Don't know. Don't matter. Anyway. So thank you very much for everyone who's watching and uh, we'll catch you next week, hopefully. Tell your friends, get more people here. And, uh, yeah, we'll... the next one's going to be great. It's going to be awesome next week. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.